Hello! Hello, 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 hello. Hello! Good to see you, Mr. Broccolini, Jay Flyer, Ben Wood, Luke, Guiding King, uh, Jim, Vash, Dry, Twitch King of Angmar. You've been here forever, bro. See you, always see you. How's everybody doing? Uh, JC Smith, Fortnite Wednesday for the Futurama. There's Futurama skins in Fortnite? Sheesh. Uh, I gotta find a new day for Squeaks. I gotta see when he's available. Someone says speedruns. Yeah, I, I, I legitimately might speedrun a bit. Listen, I'm gonna tell you up front. <laughs> I think today will be fun. I think the vibes will be good. I am not super planning anything. <laughs> okay, because I didn't finish my last like four slides of uh, wins and fails. I was busy today, so I'm not doing that. And I didn't get installed uh, Hollow Knight. I tried to do it, but I couldn't figure it out. So I need to get someone to help me. So, uh, I, and I played League with fucking stands, So it took my death. So I think I'm going to do a full stream and I want to have fun. And I'm going to have good vibes. But if you're looking for like a specific schedule, then it's probably not going to be the stream for you. And that's fine. Um, how's everybody doing? Like what's, 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 anyone have any crazy things happen this week? I figure, all right, let's see if we get a thousand people in here. Of the thousand people in here, one of them has to have an interesting story or something that happened this week. <laughs> you got COVID? That's not, I mean, that's sad. <laughs> it's not interesting. I, is COVID still like a thing? <laughs> like people are still getting it. It's still, it's happening. People are still, people are still getting sick and they patched it out. So I thought I thought Biden patched it out, bro. Uh, hi, Dr. Battle. I saw Oppenheimer and then went to the Nuclear History Museum in New Mexico. Surreal. That's kind of hype. Uh, everyone I know that has seen Oppenheimer and actually watched it, there's two reactions. One is like they openly say, hey, look, I got brain rot. <laughs> it was too long. I got bored. That's the first reaction you hear from the true brain rotters. Then the other people are like, hey, I watched it and I liked it. And it, they always go to Wikipedia afterwards. Okay? So if they like it, they actually, like, they, it makes them want to read more about it. I have never seen someone who liked it so far not want to read more about it. So, uh, I'm inter I'm, I'm seeing it Friday, IMAX, uh, going all out, full, authentic, Nolan vision. Um, and I'm excited to learn, I want to learn more about it. I, listen, I'm going to tell you my knowledge of history, okay? With regards to Oppenheimer. Uh, Oppenheimer was a League of Legends Heimer main who wanted to create the worst thing the world has ever seen. So we created League of Legends. <laughs> Wait, he already played it. <laughs> he created League of Legends and he wanted to do it. This something that could cause mass destruction. So he created that, but then Truman was like, bro, this is actually really, really uh, sadistic what you created, but it won't help us win the war, Lamau. And then so Oppenheimer was like, bet, 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 bet. And so he created the second thing, the nuclear bomb, which is not as damaging, but still very damaging. And then from there, they used it in war. Oppenheimer was super sad about it. And him and Einstein smoke a fat blunt, I think. And then that's how the movie ends. That's my, that's my, that's what I'm going in. Um, nailed it. <laughs> I can't hold it. <laughs> Op, 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 Oppenheimer style. I'm timing you out. <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on, dude. You gotta, you gotta take a break for that one. You gotta take a break for that one. A hundred percent. No, you can't hide him. I literally got him. I actually, usually I don't follow up on it. I did follow up on that one. Lonely Loaf. Thank you for the $5. Pog quick vid about op. That's perfect for a warm up for the movie. Interesting. Let's see. Um... This is Thanos versus J. Robert Oppenheimer. Epi Let's watch it. Fuck it. <laughs> I haven't seen an ERB in a minute, dude. Let's let's watch it. Let's watch it. J. Robert Oppenheimer versus Thanos. I am inevitable. Imagine 
pleasurable, inexorable, monstrous, with bars weighing on you harder than your haunting guilty conscious. I am Thanos, and I crush tracks like tesseracts in my palm. You're a pencil pushing Terran who never learned to love his ball. Seems you started off a chemist, and on your world you were a prodigy. Well, that makes sense, cause your rhymes are only hot periodically. <laughs> Man, I've earned the Avengers down to embers, sent half your planet to be slaughtered. And now I'm off and off and higher like I did to my daughter. Got a physical when I'm rapping. Six infinity gems when I'm packing. Stick your tiny nuclear dick back into your pants. Dr. Manhattan, Hadron smashing all your atoms. Best not collide with me when I'm rhyming. Cause you break and bleed so easy. I think I'll call you off and hide. It's impossible to top me off me. You just don't have a stone. Apparently the only thing you're good at wrecking is a home. Cause you slept with your friend's wife. Right there in your friend's bed. Then got another married girl pregnant. You should have gone for the head. Christian to you took everything I have left. It looks like it. After your reps, I am become death. You need an Iron Man for that wrinkly ass skin and that butt, 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 butt chin. Here we go now. Where's your rhythm? I thought you had the time stone. Your punchlines sound like they came from Rhyme Zone. You might be something in the MCU, but between us, who's the worst MCU? Oh, Dialogue's shit! Too many breaks in the syllable. You talk so slow, Drax thinks you're invisible. I cause chain reactions when I'm lyrical. Cause I've got that fizzile material. You were born to eternal, but came on looking so scary that your own mother tried to make you a temporary <laughs> meanwhile i've mastered the atom more than any man alive now i'm here to split you like two and three from five Jeez. i'm a peaceful man but i do what i must you had an evil plan thanos and it left you in the dust it must leave you enraged when you compare our talents because in this battle there is no balance for a communist pariah you come off as awfully cocky but i'll make you bend the knee and round two like nagasaki <laughs> on the box office topper the marble show like stopper this. come on like this, on this bit like it's the thanos copter you just got no answer for fortnite's dopest dancer i will low-key <laughs> choke you out like my name was throat cancer you want to talk about death how about the one that looked at you and swiped left i'm the destroyer of worlds you got your nuts handed to you by a squirrel girl <laughs> we're in the end game now tinky winky a physicist <laughs> like ant-man all up in your stinky anyone who believes that thanos did nothing wrong crap has obviously never heard you rap oh snap hey, yeah. oh shit Who's there? tough call honestly tough call it was a close one is that recent uh oppenheimer ran Hmm. I laughed more at Thanos' ones. I gotta be honest. Maybe Oppenheimer's bars were better. It's tough to say. Uh, actual interesting video about Oppenheimer and his life. I know you're fucking lying, right? <laughs> it's gonna be fucking Rick Astley, dude. J. Robert Oppenheimer might be the most... <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. I'd like to take my... I'd like to retract my previous statement, and I'd like to issue a full apology and retraction. This is a 32-minute video about Oppenheimer. <laughs> I'm not going to watch it, obviously, but I 100% I thought you were fucking gaslighting me. 100%. 100%. Uh, no, I'm going to watch the movie. I'm not going to watch. It's going to spoil things that I didn't know about him, and I want to know about him from the movie. Kevin Hart, but tall and white. Thank you for the 12 months. Love your username. Uh, there are 10 million, 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 million particles in the universe that we can observe. Oh, yeah. Uh, your mama took the worst ones and made them into one nerd. <laughs> That's a good... I remember that. Uh, That's a good bar. That's from, like, fucking 15 years ago, right? Um, <clears throat> age truck, the type of guy to wear a blue shirt on a Wednesday. You're just fucking reaching now, Quack. <laughs> Quack just literally pops in, tries to find one aspect of my appearance. He can make an easy joke out. <laughs> and then dip that's his whole fucking game plan all right <laughs> and now he's down to blue shirt on a wednesday this is i have been wearing this shirt a lot actually though i keep wearing i cycle i have these four neutral shirts i've been wearing because i can't wear my foot the problem is my closet is like 80 percent flannels and i can't wear them because it's too fucking hot i'm already sweating it's so fucking hot are you saying Oppenheimer in 70 millimeter IMAX? I am. I am. Indeed. I'm seeing it on Friday. I'm stoked to see it. Um, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. It's going to be fun. I got a group. Um, 
so lucky they're sold out in New York. Yeah, I think, I mean, I didn't organize this event and someone bought early. Uh, get AC. I actually do have AC and it's on. I don't know why it's not working. It's like still fucking hot in here. Yo, I had a stupid question. What's your stupid question, Guppy Fish? How do you feel about giving war a chance? This is cinema. What is this? This is a New five... details this morning. What is this? <laughs> it's a five minute video. Let's see. I'm going to watch this. Morning of the killing of the leader of Al Qaeda and the world's most wanted terrorist, Ayman al Zawari, could be the work of a secretive U.S. weapon, a modified Hellfire missile nicknamed the Flying Gin. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, good vid, I guess. Uh, good for my dad's fucking pension because he does work at Raytheon right now. Not a huge fan of the uh, missiles. Um, Atrioc, I appreciate the shout out from Raytheon Technologies. <laughs> Why? What happened to... Um, I feel like Raytheon gets all the shout outs now. Like Raytheon is the go-to military contractor name. I can't even remember. There used to be another one. Everyone used to say the other one. There's two. Why am I, why am I blanking right now? Yeah, Halliburton and then and then Lockheed Martin. Yeah, Lockheed Martin. It used to be Lockheed and it used to be Northrop Grunman or Gun Grunman. And now everyone just says Raytheon for every joke. It's interesting. They like they fucking they moved up in the meme world. Uh Lockheed fell off. Shit. Shit, dude. It could happen to the best of us. Spiffy stuff. Think of the prime. Pepe Silvia, think of the 18 months. DT, they have the six months. Uh, Dragoxter, thank you for the four. N Nick, thank you for the 18. Dirk Dursky, thank you for the eight. Grumman, Grumman. Grunman. Northrop Grumman. <laughs> What's that name from? Northrop Grumman is an American aerospace and defense technology company founded. Mm, where does the where's the history? The Grumman Corporation, founded by Leroy R. Grumman. Okay, got it. And they must have merged with Jack Northrop. Okay, <laughs> it was boring. <laughs> it was boring. It was just two dudes who put their name on the name of the, on the fucking corporation who merged. Mm. Uh, it's Wallace and Gromit. If. It would be interesting if they did a Wallace and Gromit sequel where they run a defense contracting company. <laughs> and it's like all claymation animated, but they like blow people up in different countries. That'd be kind of a fun. You know, it's funny is like Teen Titans Go actually does that. Teen Titans Go just randomly will throw in an episode about like defense contracting and talk about how like <laughs> military budgets work. They just fucking throw it in. It's crazy. They just have, I mean, it's actually impressive because they can never get canceled. Because they're like one of Cartoon Network's best performing shows. And they don't have any oversight. So the, the writers just randomly do episodes about random shit and kids just watch. And they just throw a song in there or whatever. Um, uh, Big A, I'm at the airport waiting for my plane to fuel up or something. That is cool. Keep me updated on every step of the way. I'd hate to miss it. Um, I can confirm the KFC Nugget slapped to the 10th degree. Thank you. <laughs> are, can I ask a question? Are you just high right now eating KFC nuggets and they taste good because you were hungry? <gasps> Speaking of which, I ordered Chipotle and it's going to arrive. So we need a good video to watch when that Chipotle gets here. Mm. Ludzi, how you doing? Ludzi, hey, truck. I found out one of my best friends growing up tried to slide into my ex's DMs about an hour after we had broken up from a four-year relationship. That's crazy. It's <laughs> a really bad friend. <laughs> That's insane. One hour? Uh, and they didn't tell you anything? That's crazy. That's that's He waited W. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, listen. It's obviously better than them trying to do it while you're dating. You know what I'm saying? It is. It's like technically. Uh, but it's just, it's not a good friend. If they told you about it, there, it's still one hour is too, too short. I mean, there's actually no. There's no way it's fine. There's no way it's fine because an hour's too short. There's nothing wrong with like, you know, maybe they'd be happier together and you guys clearly wanted to break up and 
If it was like, uh, you know, you wait a couple weeks, a month, depending on how young you are. But an hour is, an hour is too specific. Uh... Big A, I'm sitting on my bed. Okay, I already am not so invested in your problem. My mom says I need to get a job. I'm too young. I'm only 30. <laughs> Help me, please. Make her make me tendies and buy me Minecraft. All right. <laughs> Don't say true. Don't say true, right? Do not give this man the validation. Uh... <clears throat> Technically, technically, if you want to do what, uh, you know, Chinese burnt out 28, 29, 30 year olds are doing right now, you would make her tendies. <laughs> you would become a, a, a live in child, <laughs> live in children, live in full time son. Yeah, full time son. You'd be a full time son and you make her tendies and then you're good. Then you're c contributing. Um,. <clears throat> I want to make the next Enron after seeing your hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Let me invest before it pops. Let me invest while you're on the way up with the fraud and then just tell me before you're going to do the the dump. Uh, Lamino vid for eating. I will definitely watch a Lamino vid because Lamino has yet to miss. Every Lamino vid we've watched has been a banger. Uh, check this out. And it's a YouTube video. What else is going on in the news? This is a gameplay preview of Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. I'll check it out. I wonder if I'm going to like this game. Because at the end of the day, as much as I love FromSoft, am I going to like this game? I don't know. I haven't seen the gameplay. Let's find out. Hello. I and thanks for checking out the good. video. With this well, footage, like we'll introduce our new mech action game. Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. Okay. We hope it gives you an idea of this title's mood and gameplay. Okay. In a future where interstellar travel is commonplace. Bro, I hope we get, like, super sick VR games before I die. <laughs> I can already, I'm just already thinking, like, ah, fuck this Earth, dude. Just put me into VR. And let's fucking, let's have some Ready Player One shit. And, uh, cause can you imagine like a cool ass space game where I can like fly around or like experience falling to earth? It would be so sick. Too loud? Oh, you guys, people were telling me it was too quiet. So I, they were joking though. They were doing the reverse psychology. Our story begins in a distant star system on the fictional planet Rubicon 3. Wait, let me fix this. Let me fix this. Let me fix this. Let me fix this. All right. Audio. Audio is fine now. Our protagonist, an independent mercenary, is smuggled into Rubicon in search of a mysterious new substance known as coral. Your position is Muted? 135. Oh, no, we're good. Off target, but within permissible range. This is fine, right? So quiet. <laughs> Huge multi-layered stages will let players make the most of their AC's exceptional movement and attack capabilities. Oh, they're joking. <laughs> Guess people are saying muted, so I know they're lying. All right. All right. So this game, you get a big mech. Get out there, you get after it, you hustle. You get a cool mech with a sword. Why would a mech ever need a sword? Here's the one thing that I've always had a problem with when it comes to Gundams or mechs. And that is why build them to look like cool humans, which is a bad, like, they're just limbs that can snap off. 
it just looks cool, but it makes no sense. Like, why would you not just build what I've always determined is the ultimate thing, which is the brick? <laughs> why, why don't you just make it a brick, dude? No, no, there's a brick with a gun sticking out of it. Because <laughs> here's what I, here's what I'm telling you, okay? When I was in second grade, this kid and I, um, this is me visiting a second grader. I was 32. I just wanted to beat someone intellectually. Okay. And so, uh, uh, we would have these Lego competitions. Okay. This is second grade. And we would build these different objects. And then basically you'd slam them into each other and see which one was stronger. <laughs> and at first we would both build like cool robots, <laughs> You know, with like a big arm, or like this is my spaceship, and it's got like a fucking huge wing. And then you'd hit them, and then they would fall apart, and it'd be fun. But what I realized was that if I just built like a solid brick <laughs> with no parts, there was no weak point to attack, and it just beat everything. It was just a big cube, all right? And that was the unbeatable object. And I've always thought like it doesn't really make, like if you just built like a giant ball that had guns on it, it's just more effective in every way. There's no, there's no way it goes wrong. Um, so you must've been the worst kid to play with. <laughs> probably, probably. I was always the new kid too, dude. It was like first grade, new school, second grade, new school, third grade, new school. And I'm always showing up trying to fucking win, <laughs> but not at like cool things like athletics, always something like fucking whatever gamer was playing or Legos or whatever. So, how does a ball go upstairs? <laughs> rolls, bro. <laughs> rolls up the stairs. It has fucking engine power or something. How the fuck is a cube going to move? It's like a tank. You know what I'm saying? A cube can move. It's better than like feet, you know? Feet can fall over. It's like, why did they build... Here's a great example. AT-ATs in Star Wars. Why build them with these giant like need legs that have to go like why wouldn't you just put wheels <laughs> you know what i'm saying it doesn't make it doesn't it feels like fucking designed to be defeated um in a way that's inefficient and slow because it looks cool facts okay Okay. Overwhelm enemies with up to four weapons simultaneously. So I get oh that's sick. So I get to make my own mech. I get to customize it. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> that is cool. And then what I want to know is like what is what is the. Uh... Picking up signals from AC Rex. Like, is it open world? Is it levels? Is there going to be bosses? It's levels, mission based. Okay. So it's like you go in with a team, maybe, or like you'll have allies versus enemies, and then you try to win the win the war, and then it's over. That's how it, that's how it does it. Markers. Assault boost is one of the core abilities at your disposal, used for both traversal and combat. Hmm. Did you hear anything about what the corps are up to? Yeah, they'll be coming soon. They got us on the run. Okay. We're being attacked! <laughs> Identify AC! Return fire! <laughs> okay. Take full advantage of your AC's mobility to freely navigate the environment. Hmm. So, one thing I boost to take the fight to the air. would Extending like to see dimensions beyond the 2D plane. Is that an independent? Destroy it! They're outnumbered six to one. Use your missiles. Do I want a brick? Yeah, I do. <laughs> How is this guy going to beat a brick? I want you to know that. <laughs> this guy's going to try and slash the brick with his sword. It's not going to work because it's a solid fucking brick. And then the brick's going to shoot him with a gun. Boom. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm a little worried. I don't know what is off-putting to me about this because I do think it'll be good, and I think I have to give it a shot and play it. But I am, I'm, I maybe I have to see a boss or something. Let me scroll ahead, and this could be fucking sick. Customizing your. But I'm worried that it looks too empty or something. I don't know what it is. I'm just worried that I'm not. Assembly lets you exchange various parts of your AC at will, including weapons, frame parts such as the head and core, this is cool. and internal parts for power management. Assembling an AC to fit your own playstyle and strategy is crucial to success. Oh, you can make a tank! Wait a minute! <laughs> You can make the brick. <laughs> okay, I'm in, dude. I'm so in. I'm gonna minus the arms, minus the head, minus the torso. Add the the tank legs. <laughs> Put a big cannon on top and just fucking ram through every Gundam I see. It's gonna be fucking perfect. Yeah, plus nine 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 defense. <laughs> Wants a request from oh, the Archibus group. it arrived. Thanks, babe. Raven, this request you want to say hi to the stream? Oh, I didn't even see you were in the house. I thought you were not here. I wasn't here. Oh, well, then you there you go. <laughs> then I ordered because you weren't here. You Any go. jewelers? Like, they're jolling out of her mind. Maybe you got to thank them. Why don't you give me a Chipotle instead of a jeweler, huh? You want one of my chocos? Use. Yeah, if you're hungry, take one of my tacos. Let me know. Okay, they're spamming Joler. There it is. I love the Joler. I do love the Joler. Um, if you want to order something, order it. Nah. I'm not even hungry. I mean, I'm working my ass off right now, Hello. so I can afford this Chipotle, so. What are you doing? Oh, hard work. I'm just putting in the grind, you know what I'm saying? Putting in the grustle, putting in the effort. Um... Braver than the Marines, really. It's backbreaking, but I get it done. Mm. Yeah, I love all the Jolers. <laughs> like, that's why I came in here. <laughs> I know. You always go remember the Jolers. Yeah. Mm. Nail to the bone. Yeah, yeah. Just really, like, fucking grinding it, dude. Oh, wow. Yeah, we can... There's chicken walk to me going. They, I can't they, read the chat. They always chicken move walk it. before it goes like, babe, do not move me I off my own stream, see. all right? If you would like to start your own stream. Babe, I can't <laughs> see. <laughs> I can't see the chat. Oh, I guess I should come on this side, huh? There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> babe, look at the chicken walk. <laughs> babe, it's so funny. It's like. Babe. I know, because every time you come in here, you say two things. Oh, my God, the Jolers, they're Jolering. And then they start chicken walking, and you go, oh, my God, the chicken walk. It's like this. And you do it every time. So I know. I know. Well, am exactly. I that predictable? <laughs> there's two things you like about Twitch chat, and it's Joler and chicken walk. I mean, oh. yeah. I don't think there's any other emotes I like, so. There might be a third. Mm. Well, what do you think I would like? Oh. No, I was thinking they'll probably just find one, you know? Incredibly base. Well, I think there's like <laughs> a mackerel it. that's like drinking coffee or something. I like that one. Oh, there is someone drinking coffee or no, like a it's tea. Like a, it's like a mackerel. Mm. Let me see. <laughs> well, yeah, they say that I have glizzy hands cancer, a.k.a. Oh, Glancer. from that house episode? Yeah. yeah. And that I'm doomed. You're fine. Wait. <laughs> no, I don't want the coffee fish. It's like... A mackerel at a computer. That's it. That's the one. This one. What's that one? That's the one. Oh. Type. Okay. Can you get like a zoom in on that? I want to see it. No. You can't zoom in? No. But I want that fish. It's like. Well, he's not real. Oh, is he typing? I thought he was like drinking. He's typing. He's, no, he's typing up a storm. Wait, that's it's like great. when someone. Except like... from far away, it looks like an erect thing. You know? <laughs> Not really. Yeah, it does look at it. It's like, no, no. from far away. Yes, it does. Uh, but you're pretty far away. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. 
Anyways, I still prefer jeweler. Like number one jeweler, number yep. two chicken wall. Understood. And number Believe three me, is the there's type no confusion because they do the same order every time when you come on stream and you reward them every time. <gasps> mm. Okay, should I actually do something or what? What? Like just say hi and leave? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm just watching vids today, but if you want to do something. Oh, is it like Get Smarter Saturday? It's like Get Smarter Wednesday. Oh, I see it. It's on there. Yeah. You could draw a fun thing on the whiteboard if you wanted to do that. All right, you keep doing your stream and I'll draw a thing on the whiteboard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Get Wiser Wednesday. <gasps> Get Wiser Man, Wednesday. So that, that is good branding. Did that? Give him a reward. It was me. I thought of it just now. Give him a reward. I'll take the full reward. I literally just thought of it instantly off the top of my head. <laughs> Yeah, I actually need to change my title. That's a really good title. Get Wiser Wednesday. God damn. How did I come up with that? With no help from chat. Uh, we could even watch like videos that are Get Wiser Wednesday. Like stoicism videos or something. Try to get real wise. But not a real stoicism kick. Uh, oh, let me know for sure after this. I want to watch a little bit more of this armored core to see if I'm going to like it. I want to see a boss. An archivist subsidiary. That's what I want. The mission will take place in the Bonadea dunes of Western Bellius. Our coral investigation there is being blocked by the Strider, a Rubicon Liberation Front mining ship. You are to destroy it. Strider is a mobile resource base that was extensively okay, weaponized. Okay, people lore. People lore. I need to see... Oh shit. What did you say? I get wiser Wednesday fish. <laughs> can you see it? Oh, can I see it? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I'm kind of You gotta move it closer. This is the get wiser Wednesday fish. And it's a joeler with a glasses. <laughs> there, thank you. Alright, anyways, there it is. Okay, I guess I'll leave now. Um, yeah, I just don't have any ideas. What? Well, like if you want to do something together on the stream, no, I just don't have any fine. ideas. Uh, today's just a chill day because I'm I didn't... just messing around, you know. All right. I'm gonna drink water. Good idea. Wait, did you finish that tea? No. Well, where is it? Oh, I did. Sorry, it's right there. No, the fucking tea. <laughs> what are you talking about? The, this the, is not the symbol for tea, by the, the way. Yellow <laughs> tea in a cup that has ice in it. What is blood waffle about? I got no idea what you're saying. Wait, you are you shitting me right now? <laughs> the tea that I brought was a straw. It was yellow and I said it's pineapple tea. I have no idea what you're saying, what you're talking about, where it came from. But there ain't no tea here. All right? Except for the high tea man that you're seeing right in front of you. Fuck. Okay, bye. Bye. You guys are rotting her brain. She doesn't even watch Twitch. I mean, she starts saying fucking agrege. She says praise. She's been talking like she's a TF. She's like a fucking soju viewer. <laughs> she talks like a fucking K3 soju viewer. She's never played TFT in her once in her life. Take out one of its legs to bring it to a halt. Confirmed. Strider leg compromised. It's going down. What a surprise. The big thing with legs falls. <laughs> Lamau! <laughs> Someone said wish ATAT. -AT. Yeah, this is the fucking ATAT -AT at home, bro. It's just dumb. The worst, the worst one was in episode three of Star Wars when they're not even tall. They're like the little stubby legs. At that point, you literally could just do big wheels. <laughs> it was like, the, it was so fucking dumb.
some missions will see you partnered up with LIACs. Hmm. Okay, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me a little bit of like Star Fox 64 mixed with um I don't know, battle bots or something. And um and I can see the vibe here. I think what I am being turned off to in this trailer is one, the environments look very gray and empty, which is like realistic, but a little bit not visually distinct because the, the characters are all gray robots and then everything's gray and white. And so I, I want to see a little variety. Just so I, that's main thing. And then number two is that it looks, I mean, they're just making it really easy for the trailer, but the guy's just kind of like point clicking, you know, and everything's blowing up. So I want to see a, like an Elden Ring style challenge. And then I think I'm fucking set. I think I'm hooked. Range from protecting top. How many of your dogs must I kill before you learn? Blood. I hear you make fine hounds with the right training. Shame you'll have to die here. You repair kits remaining. Bro. This is literally Star Fox 64. Has anyone played Star Fox to confirm? This is it. You're like, basically, you go through a mission, you blow things up on the way, you got, uh, and then you get to a boss, and the boss, like, taunts you and goes, eh, you have to die here, and he's in a ship just like yours, and you're, it's so similar. It's so, Andros's enemy is my enemy. Your dad squealed like a pig. <laughs> and that's from a pig, which is a weird thing to say. Progresses, you'll face a number of dangerous situations and often be pitted against rival AC pilots in bitter duels. Keep the pressure up in these intense battles. Don't give the enemy a chance of victory. Yeah, that part's cool as hell. I like that part. I like the duels. If I get to play in a mech fighting another cool mech and they're tr shouting taunts at me, I'll enjoy it. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm excited. Uh, I get it. I get it up. Patrick Day, they've 21 months. Excited for the game. Want visuals like Sekiro. Yeah, I think the visuals. The visuals are kind of a turnoff for me, but I think the game will be fun. And I, I'm not ruling it off based on that. I just trust them. You know, I trust them to make a game that's pretty fun. Um, Real boss in a few secs. All right, wait, wait. Is there a real boss? I'll watch if there's a real boss. Wait, wait, wait. There's only like a minute left in the trailer. Let's just see. Okay. Formidable boss encounters <laughs> also await you at the end of certain missions. Oh, yeah. These fights are fast and aggressive, presenting a challenge for even the impossibly powerful AC. By observing the enemy's movements and tells, the player can learn as the battle unfolds. And a good command of assembly will often provide the first step to overcoming even the most daunting foes. Yeah, this game's gonna be great. This is, uh, if it's got cool bosses, that's what they know how to make. FromSoft is amazing at that. This will be good. Yeah, that that I, I feel much better about. It. I thought it was kind of like only the beginning part, where it was like you flying around fighting little mini enemies, but no, it's cool. This game's going to do numbers in Japan, but not sell in America. Yeah, I don't know how big it'll do here. I don't know. Um, but uh, hopefully it does well, because FromSoft is putting a lot of time into it. They could have just made Elden Ring 2. <laughs> they could have shipped it out the door. They could have made 14 Elden Ring DLCs and printed money. Um. Sakuga. If you've spent any time among... What is this? Hardcore anime fans, you've... What is Sakuga? <laughs> Should I even watch this? This is a weeb. This is a super weeb. Ay, ay, yeah, ay, ay, yeah, ay, ay. We need something. I want to get wiser. Actually, we can watch Lamino first, and then I'll get wiser, because Lamino is perfect while I finish my food. And then we're truly launching in. The Kennedy assassination? 
Wait a minute. This is a long video, though. I think it's too long. Fuck, he does big videos, huh? What's Internet Historian? Internet Historian's not even that long. Internet Historian does like a nice 28-minute video, bro. Actually, he does longer. Internet Historian. Internet Historian's last video was 38 minutes. Yeah. And it was good. It was the good Area 51 one. Wow, he'll, Internet Historian has made two videos in two years. Area 51 and Costa Concordia. <laughs> they were bangers, but goddamn, how that that... Oh, second channel. You're right, you're right, right. The cave one was good, too. Mm, okay. I need a video we're going to get wiser from. Short one? It's this. This summer. Dr. Oppenheimer. Oh, 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 oh. Is about to find out. Oppenheimer style. What be the bomb? Hey, what all what about? What the what I'm saying. My the bomb. It the killed people. Well, I wouldn't exactly call them people. I thought we were building a rice cooker. Well, you're technically right. Oh, terrible. Terrible video. Terrible video. Racist. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Didn't like it. Forgot who sent it, but uh, if I found out, I would dial him out. Or bam. Uh, what's this? Uh, finally understand Hitman. I think I've already seen that. Um, did you see the UAP hearing today, Big A? They brought up the UAG, Unidentified Aerial Glizzy, Monka S. You... <laughs> Shouldn't be allowed to write. <laughs> I literally think it should be allowed to like stop someone from writing text ever again. Like the internet should just ban you from writing text. You can still watch videos. I'm not banning you from the internet. You just can't write text because the text you write is not uh, contributing. Yeah, like you get the keyboard, you get the mouse and the and the screen, just no keyboard. <laughs> um, the reason you brought that up though is true. There was that guy today who basically said that aliens are real under oath, but then Stans told me that guy basically said he's never seen an alien; he just heard from someone else. <laughs> so that that's not like like I understand this guy probably believes what he's saying when he says under oath, but that doesn't. It isn't mean it. Unless you're saying under oath, I saw an alien. It's real. Then it's just like, okay, bro. I mean, people will swear they saw Bigfoot, but I don't believe Bigfoot's real. Hmm. Coffeezilla? All right, I love Coffeezilla. Most people know that I... I'll always watch a good Coffeezilla. get threatened a lot on this channel. People don't like it when you expose them. I suggest you use the money you got from pumping your Patreon to hire a good lawyer. You're gonna need it. So scan- <laughs> I forgot about that because Logan Paul really thought he fucking ate, dude. Logan Paul went silent after they got called out on the scam. Took like, I don't know, three weeks or a month and then dropped that video just trying to roast CoffeeZilla. Everyone immediately, immediately tore it apart. Like it did nothing. And then he um, took it down and apologized because it was <laughs> like he spent all that time just cooking in the lab trying to make a fucking ultimate takedown on CoffeeZilla. He dressed up like him. He did the whole thing. And it was immediately a fail. It's crazy. No one told him, don't upload this, bro. This is such a bad... Hammers saying that they're gonna go after me is something that I've long been desensitized to. Coffeezilla, nobody knows anything about his family because they don't have the resources I have. <laughs> but what we don't talk about a lot is that the opposite is also true. When victims of scams learn what's been done to them, 
The scammer very often becomes the target of a lot of personal threats. And honestly, most of them seem to take the same approach I do. You unfortunately have to ignore it because 99% of the time, internet threats are just that, threats, which never go beyond the screen. But this video is a reminder that every now and then, someone will take it all the way. We're talking today about Aiden Platersky, a scammer who taunted his victims with flashy cars and took their money until it was too late. And he was kidnapped, beaten, and ransomed for $3 million, leading up to this video, which I will warn you, may be disturbing. Everything that happened is my fault. I'm not gonna put the blame on anybody else. I'm not gonna try to put the blame on anybody else. I feel humiliated. Jesus I feel disgusted Christ. in my actions. I feel disgusted in what I did. After 2021, I feel like a lot of it was illegal. All these guys that are owed the money, I'm gonna do what I can do to make it right. I'm gonna call each and every one of you individually. What you just saw is a man who used to be called the Crypto King by Forbes.com, who took in $40 million via a Ponzi scheme and never repaid his victims. In this video, he appears to be apologizing for those actions, but now that he's free, he says he- Hey, I'm gonna openly say he didn't deserve that. <laughs> I'm gonna open just for chat because you're making jokes and I got, we can make jokes in chat, I'm not a big deal. I, I, I don't, no one should be kidnapped and beaten and made to make like a fucking torture apology. I don't, I, I, I don't care. No, I, I don't fucking put him in jail. Give him due process. You guys, everyone's getting so crazy now. I understand everyone's mad, dude. I do get it. But like this and that 19 year old kid dying in the sub and everything. Everyone is so mad. That, I, I don't know. People are just looking for street justice. I don't know. I, I'm not on board with it. I'm telling you openly, I'm not on board with that. I don't believe in like just grabbing someone and fucking beating the shit out of them until they. Mm. A-Track doesn't believe in Batman. Batman has a moral code, right? <laughs> if Batman were real, he would be more like the Repo Reaper, dude. <laughs> he would beat the shit out of random people and dance on it for TikTok and then sell sponsorships. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I. <laughs> That doesn't exist. And so, I don't know. I, I I mean, listen, I pray. I pray all the time for fucking uh, punitive justice, especially on, like, Wall Street assholes. I think it's one of the biggest fucking jokes of history that in 2000 fucking 7, 8, and 9, nobody went to jail uh, for, you know, millions of Americans losing their homes, entire disaster. But I don't, I don't like the idea that People are going to fucking grab someone, kidnap them, hurt them. I don't, I don't, it feels like it's turning into a banana republic, dude. It fucking... You doing Hitman later? Yeah, I do think it's okay if you hire like a clown assassin, though. A clown assassin to like break into their building and make a chandelier fall on their head. I think that's chill. That's fine, and I support that in every way. I just think... He had no choice. Now, we first learned about the kidnapping back in March when Aiden Platursky's father claimed that Aiden was kidnapped. But many people, including myself, didn't really know what to make of these claims because no evidence existed besides an interview, which was filed in court. The father says that his son was taken. They basically held him for approximately three days, drove him around to various parts of Southern Ontario, beat him, tortured him, allowed him to make specific phone calls, approximately- I'm just being brave here. I'll be the bravest person. Let's say I'm anti-torture. <laughs> I'm gonna be the guy standing up in the courtroom, dude. And I'm gonna say, I think torture is bad. I, I think we can find a different way to solve our problems than torturing each other. <laughs> Cringe. It's un-American. Uh, yeah, pro Gitmo though. Two or three days later, he was released with the threat that he needed to come up with some money fast. Specifically, $3 million. But this week we found out that this kidnapping was very much real and that five men were arrested and charged with kidnapping. And we know that Allegedly, one of the kidnappers, Akil Haywood, actually knew Aiden quite well because he invested with him. Court records show Haywood lost more than $700,000 investing with Platursky. And in another twist, he was appointed as an inspector in Platursky's bankruptcy proceedings. That's right. One of the kidnappers 
was one of Flaterski's victims who presumably watched him post luxury cars and private jets. Wait, I'm sorry. Did I understand that right? By the way, what a flex is this? <laughs> Two bags of Doritos, bro. <laughs> Holy shit, the Crypto King is eating good with the two-for-one special at fucking uh, Kroger. Uh, damn, he got money. Uh, did they say that the guy who was an investor with the Crypto King who lost 100K was also appointed to be the inspector that to find out? That's insane. That's a conflict of interest. You can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> That's not. Okay, I don't think he's going to be impartial. He's going to be pissed because he personally lost a lot of his own money in this. Jets to social media until he had had enough. And as one of the bankruptcy inspectors, he had access to special kinds of information about Platursky, possibly including the fact that some of the trustees thought Platursky was hiding assets. Do you believe that he's hiding assets from you? I have reason to believe that he is still hiding assets, yes. So Haywood likely knew Platursky wasn't sharing everything and likely knew other people in the case were hiding information too, like Colin Murphy, one of the fundraisers for this Ponzi scheme. In January, he wiped his phone of all the data which he was asked for, uh, and he had a very bad explanation for why. Did you wipe your phone before, you know, knowing that they needed me? <sighs> what was on it. I keep uh, super sensitive stuff on there with my girlfriend. And um, it's funny because uh, this Norman Groot guy, he wants, uh, he's saying, oh, I'm hiding this information and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and he doesn't realize that I've been like, I've been keeping stuff uh, to give to somebody. I just didn't know if he was the right person. Ah, dang. I was about <laughs> to give you guys all the evidence. I, I was having too much sex. <laughs> Oh, I was having too much sex with my girlfriend and filming it, and I cannot, I had to wipe my phone. But definitely I was doing that. There was no fucking information on scam in there. Only information on the huge amount of sex I was having. Wow, what a chad. I do think this is the classic 2021 scammer pose. <laughs> Every crypto scammer has a different color Lambo that they're sitting on the front of. And I mean, there's like a million of these. This is fucking, this is a classic. This is just, this is incredible. I wish they minted NFTs of all of these and I could own them. <laughs> Cause I would love to collect different 2021 scammers. It would be ironic and cool. Uh, bring it back, dude. All we need is for a little bit more shakiness in the economy, uh, for Jerome Powell to blink, get scared, drop interest rates back to zero, start flooding the economy with money again, and we could have 2024 be the fucking double pump straight to the moon. NFTs, crypto. Bring it all back, dude. He raised them today? Yes, he did. Good man. I'm I'm praying he holds his nerve. He's He keeps saying higher for longer. I just, I don't know if I believe him. Razors for this Ponzi scheme. In January, he had an explanation for why. Gee, why? for no reason um yeah this this may be one of the most transparent ways to hide evidence to wipe it before and go i had a girlfriend guys can't hold me accountable and my point is these details suggest that haywood might have believed that platursky was hiding assets that he could get that the court simply couldn't although it's worth saying i'm definitely not defending what haywood did kidnapping him because not only is it completely wrong, it quickly came out that Haywood isn't some misguided vigilante for justice or something. Uh, given what he did next, he seems about as horrible. Haywood is also charged with threatening an official from Grant Thornton, who's overseeing the proceedings for two- Oh, interesting, this is your hero? <laughs> this is the hero for, this is your Batman? This guy's the, <laughs> you guys are, this is your goat? <laughs> million dollars in cryptocurrency. The accounting firm said Haywood resigned as an inspector. Grant Thornton said, we've been cooperating with police and have maintained open lines of communication. We cannot comment any further as this is an active investigation. Wow, you heard that right. Not only did Haywood threaten the scammer, he threatened the bankruptcy lawyers in the case and wanted a bunch of money from them, which is really playing both sides in a creative way, I've got to say.
And my point is, look, it's not like he was looking for the amount he was owed, which is allegedly $740,000. He was looking for millions of dollars. Yeah, he was trying to profit, bro. And it wasn't for the average person. <laughs> he wasn't trying to get all the money back to give it out to people that got scammed. He just found a way to beat up a fucking crypto kid for $3 million, which I guess we're all looking for in our lives. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying if a guy on a Lambo had a big stack of cash with a dollar sign on it and it's sitting in front of me and there was a sign that said you will not get caught if you beat this guy up <laughs> and I couldn't just pop him one and grab it, I wouldn't consider it. I'm not going to say I'm fucking that morally righteous. I wouldn't consider it. But I do think that this guy took it too far. As a payday. So no one in this situation is particularly great. And of course, since then, him and his co-conspirators now face kidnapping charges. But what I do find very confusing is that all of the crimes being passed around here like a game of hot potato, the one person not being criminally charged in this situation is Aiden Platursky himself, the original scammer in this whole situation that started this all. He lied to all those people, said he was this great uh, cryptocurrency forex trader, allegedly stole tens of millions of dollars, spent most of it on cars, private jets, and expensive houses, and he's not being charged? Like, I'm so surprised by this. This case is very reminiscent of another story that we've just recently did with Ted Safranco, who promised these amazing forex trades. Yeah, th this does bother me. And I, I guess it has to do with the fact that either there was so much scamming the government is behind like they don't have a lot of money for this enforcement and they don't understand crypto that well and it takes a long time i'm an assuming that's part of it um cuz again this crypto king is not connected he's not fucking a kennedy he's not <laughs> you know what i'm saying he's not he's not so politically connected and powerful that he's above the law so it's got to be more good old fashioned stupidity and like um or is he? <laughs> you know, stealing forty million does not put you in a fucking big league. He's not, he's not like he's not billionaire class of what you know what I'm saying. So it's got to be more like literally they just are too lazy or underfunded. Um. Uh. He's small fish. Yeah. Yeah. He's Ludwig rich. <laughs> he's Ludwig rich, dude. He's not above the law. Although Ludwig does, I mean. You guys know how he gets his hair, right? <laughs> Sucks the blood of children, injects it right into his head. <laughs> that I mean, someone should investigate. I'm not going to do it, but someone investigate it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> adrenochrome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's big into that, dude. You think that hair stays that good for that long? Yeah. He's got a blood boy. He's got a couple blood boys. Mm. AIDS, but just ran a big Ponzi instead, and... Not only am I surprised by the size of these Ponzi schemes and that Platerski did something very similar. He invested only 2% of the 40 million he took in, but I'm also surprised by how blatant of a fraud that- Now he started out with me and slime. <laughs> in the early days when it didn't need to be that good, he stole all of my and slime's hair. Okay, but then that wasn't enough. We don't have that much. You know what I'm saying? And so he had to go farther and farther and farther. And now it's straight up children's blood. this is and incidentally the similarities don't stop there with our last story remember ted safranco claimed yep. he was also attacked by would-be creditors and yeah i don't know if this is real or not <laughs> this feels this is so you know this is not the same thing as the other guy <laughs> ted safranco yeah this guy got stung by a bee or hit his head on the door <laughs> that's good this guy walked through a door wrong, and it doesn't, this doesn't feel like he was in a brutal fucking kidnapping. So this pattern of crypto or Forex scammers isn't going away anytime soon, nor are the legions of upset victims who are pissed both that they got robbed and that most of these people face little to any criminal charges. And so it's easy to see why they're frustrated, although I have to say that I disagree with the method. Kidnapping someone who scammed you and ransoming them for money in some kind of scammer uno reverse card is not a good idea and getting an apology from them when they, you've beaten them up isn't doing anyone a service yeah, it doesn't feel like so a... <laughs> for ethical reasons human reasons and stay out of jail reasons maybe don't do this <laughs> he 
He's not really selling it. Coffeezilla, can we please openly say we don't think people should kidnap other human beings and torture them without... You're doing it like the YouTuber way. <laughs> He's doing it like whenever Dream's like, hey, don't attack these guys, okay? Don't attack the speedrun mods. They're just doing their job. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ambiguous, bro. There's no both sides on it. Just don't torture people. <laughs> don't do it. You sounded a little half-hearted, Coffee. Oh fuck. What's next? I swear to God, not pre-watch. <laughs> I should let these things finish. I should let these things finish. I swear to God, I don't pre-watch this shit. Please drink responsibly. Uh, I don't know. I constantly get threats, so I sympathize with the guy. And don't do it is the right answer, but I don't know. <laughs> but what? Well, I don't. I don't know. I, I get it. Excuse I me. Guess. I mean, it's wrong, but I get it. Oh. But it's clearly wrong. And look, Haywood sucks. <laughs> but I get wanting to screw the guy who screwed you. But I can't say that because it, it is wrong, and the impulse is wrong. And I didn't want to put this in, but like, this Aiden guy is horrible. I went to his Instagram to reach out for comment, and I saw what he's posting. It's all, you know, supercars. But you are putting it in, though. I want you're saying I didn't put this in, but you are putting it in right now in this this choreographed scene between you and a robot on a green screen. I mean, this is in. <laughs> this is part of the script of the movie. This is all planned out. Uh, Private jets. It's a middle finger to all the victims. And if I lost money to that guy, I'd be pissed too. Wow, coffee. You got an edge. I didn't think you had it in you. You know, I mean, I wouldn't do anything, and I wouldn't change what I said. Don't do it is the right thing, but sometimes the right thing feels... What? Hopeless? Inadequate? Sisyphean? Pointless? This conversation is pointless. I'm, I'm done talking about it. Look, uh, you got anything on TV? Uh, I hate when you put my show on. Come on, change the channel. Put something else on. Oh, sure. Speaking of new topics, I've got just the thing that'll cheer you up. I found this new creator. You're gonna love this coffee. Very avant-garde stuff. Okay. I'm telling you, future of entertainment. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> gang, gang. Gang, gang. I do so good. Ask me so good. Balloon. I'm pretty great, huh? Man, she oh, fucking rules. What is the life. noise again? Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> oh my god, I figured it out. Whenever Quack comes here and says some stupid shit, I'm gonna play a sound clip of that girl saying quack, 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 quack. No matter what he says, I'm just gonna play it over and over until he shuts up. We truly live <laughs> in an age of wonders. I need to get someone give me that clip. Someone give me that sound clip. I'll put it on and it counters no matter what he says. <laughs> Holy shit, owned! <laughs> it's like the Death Note, dude. It's so powerful. Mm. Hey, because of ongoing legal proceedings, I'm not doing any interviews at the moment. I would love to get my full side of the story out there. However, I'll be doing so after legal proceedings. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is not a good guy, dude. This guy's a fucking scammer. I wish he would go to jail. I wish we would just follow through on the normal legal system. Or whatever. What are you guys doing in Canada? Put him on an ice flow and push him out. Whatever. I, I don't know what it is. I'm not saying I'm an expert on Canadian law. I'm just saying I don't think he should be kidnapped and tortured, bro. That's what I'm trying to say. But especially by someone who's not a fucking... Who's supposed to investigate his bankruptcy. That kills people? Depends on which direction the ice flow is going. What if they're in, like, uh, the border of Canada and Alaska, and you push the ice flow, and they cross the border, and then they just become an Alaskan citizen, <laughs> and they live the good life in America, dude? A fate worse than death. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, waterboard him with syrup. Make him play hockey for an hour. Oh, God. Cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> uh, make him watch hockey with Canadians who are really into it. I want to talk about stats and shit. Oh, God. Make him eat poutine. 
Can we watch House? I'll probably watch House tonight, but not not at this moment. I'm, I got a little bit. I actually might. We'll watch something else for sure because we're getting wiser. Let's get. We had to get. That was a good video, but I want to get wiser. Does anyone have something we can get wiser with? It can't be Lamino because it's a 90 minute video, and I'm sorry, it's just too long. This video will make you wiser. This is a video about Columbo. <laughs> I don't understand the Zoomer obsession with Columbo. I don't get it. I don't know why you guys keep bringing it up. I don't understand it. I do request that if you actually like Columbo and not just the TikToks, that you please watch the new show Poker Face created by Ryan Johnson. It is a modern Neo-Columbo with a female lead. It's incredible. It's very good. Um... The only problem is it's on Peacock, so you have to pirate it. Because <laughs> I cannot convince anyone to get a Peacock version. But it's very good. I recommend it. I think uh, I think uh, I think Poker Face is a great show. I think it's a uh, modern Columbo. <clears throat> um, what is this? Disney. How to do a plot twist? Interesting. I have never. Oh, it's only about Knives Out, though? Nah, no thanks. Um, how about a short video? No. Great business video about the British Premier League soccer. On February 3rd. How England's football league is breaking the sport. Fuck it, is it interesting enough? I kind of like sports business. Fuck it, let's try it out. Let's try it out. 2023 in London, the English football club, Chelsea, played a home game against a rival, Fulham. Okay. The game ended in a scoreless draw, but Fulham's fans were so excited they stayed to chant. At <laughs> Fucking, <I can't. laughs> this is such a classic American take on soccer, but come on, bro. <laughs> Everyone gets out there and screams and gets excited and the fucking score is nil-nil. A riveting 0-0 zero -zero tie. It's ridiculous. It, that, that's that's dumb. Everyone's so what happened is two sides ran around on the field for two hours and nothing happened. Nobody scored. Everyone goes home. There's no winner. That means it was good. You don't need points to have fun. You do. I am gonna I'm gonna be bold again and say you do. You need at least one point to have fun because a tie is boring. Uh. It makes the anticipation all the better. <laughs> no, okay, there's no anticipation for what? The game's over. You go home. You went out there and you watched for two hours and nobody won. Zero zero draw is more fun than what? Play the video? Wait, wait, wait. After the game. Soon, these words were in articles all over the world because in just one month, Chelsea had spent 329 million euros on new players. <laughs> More money than all the clubs in the French, Italian, German, and Spanish football league spent combined. <laughs> you have a club like Chelsea. Okay, I can kind of see why it'd be funny. I, I can kind of see. Wait, I just want to say... If I showed up and one team had spent hundreds of millions more on their players than the other team, and it was still 0-0, zero, zero, I can see why that would be funny. <laughs> I can see why I'd be entertained as a fan of the underdog. Like, hey, you guys can't get a fucking goal. It's almost like it's fun for them because they didn't lose. I see that. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, I'm coming around. I'm coming around. Chelsea. And they think they can do everything. I mean, it's an extraordinary amount of money. But it's what Chelsea's owners believed it needed to do in order to succeed in the most competitive, most popular, and richest football league in the world, the English Premier League. The English Premier League, these sums of money are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The problem is that the Premier League's clubs have grown so rich that the rest of Europe can't keep up. It's very difficult to be competitive against English clubs. It is so far ahead of all the other leagues. The gap seems to be widening. So how did the English Premier League get so rich? And how is that- So soccer fans, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll call you footballers. <laughs> um, so the English Premier League is like what, um, I'm just trying to get like, like the way 
all the best basketball players in the world go to the NBA? Are all the best soccer players going to the EPL? Because the money's so good, right? So the... No. No, 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 no. Kinda? Watch that. I'm asking questions. I want to understand as I go along. Um, Used to be, and not anymore. So there's... Because there's multiple leagues. They're all different leagues, right? There's like a ton of soccer leagues. And the bet, like, I guess, well, Messi plays in America now, right? Dude, I have, I have a guy. It's like, a, I mean, I don't know. I, it's like a friend of a friend's lawyer. <laughs> okay. But he bought like eight season tickets for the team that Messi is on before Messi was announced to have joined it. And those tickets went up in price like by like 20K per Inter Miami. Yeah. And so now he he like sold just the tickets for the first game where Messi played and made like, I'm not kidding, like, like six figures or something. Something ridiculous. And and like and and is set. Like he's set for fucking all the money he spent and more. Something ridiculous. I mean, it, I, he was telling me, and I, I mean, the guy was telling me through his friend. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. Um, so, yeah, insane. I don't know. What a, what, a, what a fucking come up. Who pays that much for soccer? I guess Messi's first game was like extreme demand. Like it was all rich people buying it. Is that a problem for Europe's favorite sport? Start by explaining how football works in Europe. Oh, is he gonna explain everything I just asked? <laughs> These fucking video makers, dude! I swear to God, it's like leave some gaps for the poor reactors, dude. Leave some gaps for the hardest working people in the business, reactors, who have to pause and ask questions, and they don't need you explaining it right after. It's insane. These guys should be arrested. Starting in England around the 1860s, people began organizing official football clubs and playing each other. Eventually, they divided these clubs into a tiered system. The worst clubs played down in these leagues and the best up here. Okay. But clubs could move within this system. At the end of each season, the bottom two clubs in a league would be demoted to the league below, a punishment called relegation. But the top clubs would be promoted up. It puts a competitive edge to it. Okay, I don't know what happened, and they're probably going to tell me that something else happened. But they did this in League of Legends for a while, and it was kind of hype. And it forced teams to try. But then the teams got angry, because that means they had to spend a lot of money on players and could any time have a bad season and get kicked out. So the teams banded together and basically forced Riot to get rid of relegation. <laughs> Good. And then they could afford to just spend nothing on the players. Uh... Everything. This is James Corbett, a senior reporter at Off Pitch. You know, effectively, you could have a village club that might be in tier 10 of English football, and if you do the right things, you know, they could be playing in the first division within a decade. You do have those fairy tale stories. Wimbledon, sixth in the first division in their first season in the top flight. On the verge of a football fairy tale. By the mid-20th century, these five leagues in the biggest five countries had most of the best players, and okay. therefore the best clubs. But every year, the best club from every league would play each other in a big tournament, at first called the European Cup. It was an opportunity for clubs in that any country hype. to win big. In the 1980s, clubs from 16 different country leagues reached the semifinals. And in that period, a Portuguese, Dutch, and even a Romanian club won. That's He's made it again! And Romanians have won the European Cup! But football was about to change, and it began in England with a tragedy. Okay. On April 15, 1989, 700 people were injured and 96 killed at a game in Sheffield. There was one piece of beans on toast at the top. And there. <laughs> oh, sorry, I should, shouldn't joke on tragedy. Uh, I, just, you're, I have a tough time when it's British people, you know? It's tough to get the empathy that I need. 
Poor crowd control and stadium design led to a stampede. I'm sorry, it was the low I'm point sorry. for English football after a disastrous <laughs> decade. Sorry. English stadiums were falling apart and attendance at matches was plummeting. And English clubs were banned from European tournaments after a fight between fans killed 39 in 1985. Well, English football was a game in decline. You had rioting, you had hooliganism, it was in you decline? had racism. It was um, like an epicenter for all of society's ill. Thank God there's no more rioting, hooligans, or racism in English football nowadays. I'm so glad we got past that. Huge, huge progress. 1990 is a thing of the past. Disputes between clubs and television broadcasters resulted in none of the English top leagues games airing on television during the 85 and 86 season. So many of England's best players fled to play in the other European leagues. By 1990, a few people were desperate to turn things around, specifically the owners of England's five richest and most popular clubs. Arsenal, Tottenham Hotspur, Manchester United, Everton, and Liverpool. Big clubs wanted a bigger share of broadcast revenues, centralized marketing, you know, they saw the benefit of that in US sports. Right. And essentially they saw, they saw an opportunity. In 1992, they led a group of 22 clubs to break off and form a new league called the Premier League. Oh. And they designed it to be English football's resurrection. It's a whole new The Premier League served as the new top league in English football. It controlled its own TV rights, which it sold for 427 Smart. million euros to a satellite TV company. Cash that the clubs then used to find new ways to make money and modernize the game. They renovated and built new stadiums that could fit more fans. And they started selling sponsorships and merchandise all over the world. But it was satellite TV that made the biggest difference, allowing the games to be broadcast to new audiences like in the US and Asia. The Premier League was able to more than double the price for its rights in 1997, and again in 2001. It is one of the great success stories in global sport. Crucially, the Premier I like that this guy has a book called... It is one of the great success stories in global... The ball is round. <laughs> and this is a fucking tome, dude. I mean, there's like 800 pages in this. This is like Harry Potter 4, dude. I don't know what he's reading, but this shit goes deep. <laughs> It is round, and I want to know why. Global sport. <laughs> Crucially, the Premier League divided its TV revenue relatively equally between clubs, which made them more competitive. Spain, Italy, and Germany all gave more TV money to its most successful clubs, which let a few dominate year after year. By 2004, the Premier League had successfully turned English... Can I be honest? That is really fucking dumb. If you give some of the clubs a bigger share of the money, those clubs will buy the best players and continue to win and they'll entrench them at the top of the charts every time. That's a stupid system. <laughs> that is making whoever had powerful clubs at the start of the thing have powerful clubs forever and have no change. Like the one good thing, actually there's a couple good things about the system that the NFL and the NBA have set up, which is that they all equally, I mean... The annoying thing they do is they have player salary caps so that all of the upside goes to the billionaire owners, not the players that do, or the coaches or everything that has all the, the, the real fucking earning power. But uh, the NFL, at least like they distribute the funds equally and they use the draft system and everything to make sure it's like basically equitable. Like almost any team can win um, if they get the right management. Uh... Football around becoming the wealthiest league in Europe, and some very rich people were noticing. Hey, I'm Sam Ellis, and welcome to Search Party. I'm gonna really quickly say thank you to today's sponsor, Incogni. Every year, there are more and more data breaches, and it's because there are now countless data accounts and intelligence tech that are updated every 30 days. Incogni rules. Added bonus. Got your information ending up there, either me for sponsoring our very first video, and you can go to incogni.com slash- This is their first video? Holy fuck, I'm impressed search party. Clicking that link will help support this channel, and it gets you 60% off Incogni's annual plan. And it's risk-free. If after 30 days it's not a good fit, you get your full refund. Thanks, Incogni, for supporting our journalism. Now let's get back to the story. Okay. This is Roman Abramovich. He's a Russian businessman who, back in 2003, was worth almost 10 billion euros. Yeah. And he wanted to buy a football club. As you do. He settled on a West London club named Chelsea, which was in deep financial trouble. He paid around 199 million euros for the club and to relieve its debt. 
then immediately injected millions more of his own money to buy almost a dozen excellent players from okay. clubs in the Premier League and across Europe. All right, well, Even well, while the club lost money, he added more. That was the big moment because he came in and he had a level of wealth that was just beyond anything that the Premier League had ever seen before. Chelsea quickly won the Premier League in 2005 and 2006 and began consistently qualifying for and advancing deep into the all-European This is so dumb. I mean, it's like sports is just a way for different billionaires to uh, flex on each other. It's just a, a money-spending game. It's pay to win. It's like a it's like a loot box. <laughs> That's so stupid. Tournament since renamed the Champions League. Abramovich proved that you could buy success in the Premier League. And yeah, encouraged... he literally went to like a friend's FIFA league and opened more packs. <laughs> he bought like more gold FIFA packs and got a better team and then just beat you despite practicing less. Is that not why salary cap good? Well, if the teams can't get relegated, like in NFL, there's 32 teams, right? And they can't get relegated. They can't get down. And so uh, w when you don't have a salary cap and they all make the same amount of money, they all have basically the same amount to spend. Uh, so that it's not too big of a difference. I guess some teams in bigger markets might have more ad dollars. So I got to think about it more. I don't want to make a, a rush judgment. It, it could be, there could be a, a rationale to it. Um, but the problem with the current system in the NFL now is that some teams are owned by billionaires that don't give a shit about winning at all, and they've actually turned it into a free ride system. Basically, they they piggyback on the teams that care, and they just they they buy the cheapest players and they cash in and take their huge uh, TV rights money and then spend as little as they can on the on the staff, on the on the maintenance, on the uh, the team, on the you know the grounds of the the arena. Yeah, Browns and like. There's just some teams that are only in there to siphon cash from the NFL. Um, and that the freeloader problem is the problem with the current system. So you have to figure it out. I mean, either you have freeloaders or you have fucking super pay to win. They're both problems. There should be some sort of middle ground. I think the NFL system is better. But um, baseball has this issue, but worse, IMO with no cost cap. Uh, yeah, perhaps. I mean, again, I think I think it's fair to say that like some teams are just inherently richer or have billionaire owners that don't care. Or... Yeah, I, I do think there's a rationale for a cost cap. Maybe I should think it through more. I, what I don't like, though, is that like, you know, LeBron James, just for an example, is worth more than any team can pay him. <laughs> like he brings in so much value and can only capture a small portion of it because they literally cap it, uh, especially like LeBron James more in his prime. And so it's it feels unfortunate for these athletes and they have this small w window of earning potential and they can't earn what they're kind of worth to the team because they're capped. I think it's, I wish there was a way around that or a better way, but I also agree that pay to win sucks. You're right, poor LeBron, he needs more money. I, yeah, people always say that. They're like, oh, poor LeBron, oh, poor actors, poor whatever. But they never say like, who gets the money when they don't? <laughs> And it's never like the common man. It's always a billionaire. Okay? So what I'm saying, like poor LeBron, I'm saying compared to the guy taking all of the money that he's earning. It's not like it's going to you, fucker. There's other owners to try it for themselves. Throughout the 2000s, a new class of wealthy and mostly foreign owners began buying and pumping millions into Premier League clubs. It helped that at first, the Premier League had very few rules on who could buy a club and how much they could spend on it. Premier League has always been sort of quite non-interventionist. Any investment is as good investment. So these new owners began making the already rich clubs richer, <laughs> while others boosted some smaller clubs into notoriety. Like Ted Lasso. Sheikh Mansour bin Syed Al Nayan was a member of oil rich Abu Dhabi's royal family, who cool. in 2008 bought Manchester City. Yeah, Man City moved it up another notch because you had the resources, not just the wealth. What's funny is like, so th this has happened, like uh, oil money has flooded into esports in a way they bought ESL and stuff, but there's never been like a, just like a Saudi prince who wanted to really own an esport. Because the money is so much cheaper. Like, for what they spend on one football club, 
They could buy every single esport team in every game <laughs> and name them all after themselves and have them all compete. Like they could own everything. There's no, the, the money is so much smaller. And it would be funny to see if just one fucking Saudi prince was really into fucking Rocket League or something. He could literally buy every single player on every single team <laughs> and just choose who wins. He could just choose. Wealth, but the resources of a nation state. He spent over 1.7 billion euros over the next 15 years on the best disgusting. players, coaches, staff, and facilities from all over Europe. And of course, it worked. <laughs> This strategy helped spark an arms race in the 2010s. Clubs started spending more and more each year to sign the best players and keep up with each other. While many of the rich clubs could afford to lose money on expensive players, many smaller clubs couldn't. It created huge inflationary pressure, not just in terms of transfer fees, but in terms of player salaries. And they effectively pulled the rug from under the feet of other clubs. And it became harder for clubs promoted into the Premier League to afford to stay there clubs of massively yeah wasn't there a club that took on like 500 million euros of debt to sign Messi, <laughs> and then they played he played like a season or something with them am i crazy the, like he didn't play there very long and then they're now they're just drowning in debt they can't even make their payments it could be psg is this wrong this didn't happen i have to see you're thinking of PSG, they're another oil club? Some club, club takes on debt to sign Messi. Um, let me see. Barcelona announces 1.35 billion euro debt following Messi's departure to PSG. Uh, oh, no. yeah, they took on debt to keep Messi, then he left and all they had was a bunch of debt. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh yeah, it was Barcelona. Yeah. They won a shit ton, yeah, while he was there, but then they, they didn't actually make enough money to make it back. Um is what it looks like. We'll see. Spent trying to get into Premier League. In 2013, the Premier League adopted rules that were designed to encourage clubs to break even. But they didn't slow down the spending because these clubs were in a lucrative cycle. As wealthy owners spent millions to bring the best players to the Premier League, more fans, especially international ones, wanted to watch it, which generated more TV money, which gave clubs more money to spend on more players. That's sick. By 2022, the Premier League had 11 of the 20 richest football clubs in the world. And as far as revenue, the Premier League clubs brought in over 3 billion euros more than Germany and Spain's top leagues, and more than double France and Italy's. So by 2023, the Premier League was on a spending spree that Europe's other clubs just couldn't match. Okay, Something Chelsea made teams. obvious in 2023. Transfer deadline day and Chelsea have locked down a British record transfer. Spending of $357 million in January. La Liga president has launched a scathing attack. The British market is a doped market. This can jeopardize the sustainability of European football. Do you think we're going to see a time when the Premier League's ever equal by any of the league. By 2023, Europe's other leagues generated far less television money than the Premier League, but they also had more rules. Germany blocked ultra-wealthy owners from taking over its clubs, and oh, Spain's league placed strict spending limits on its clubs. It often made these clubs healthier financially, but put most of them at a huge disadvantage when bidding for players against Premier League clubs, like right. Chelsea. Yeah, players don't want to go there if they can get more money. The year money. before, new ultra-rich American owners had bought Chelsea, decided to splurge on new players, and were prepared to pay huge prices in order to outbid the other Premier League clubs. It offered 121 million euros for one player from Portugal's league, and 70 million for one in Ukraine's, plus Shit. millions more for another six players, totaling 329 million euros. That's more money than the annual revenue of most European clubs. So Chelsea <laughs> got these players, and while its spending was extreme, even the worst Premier League clubs were outbidding Europe's major clubs. Okay. Southampton bought five players. So it does look like all the best players are in 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 uh, in the Premier League, in in England. That's what it feels like, right? Not all. 
Okay. I mean, I got to feel like most of them are because there's way more fucking money in it. Not everyone chases the bag. All right, based, but including one from France for 25 million euros. And Bournemouth bought three players, including one for nearly 23 million euros from... It creates a dynamic where Europe clubs know they can overcharge the PL teams. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, this guy fucking rules at, at soccer. <laughs> yeah, give me 100 million euros for him. This guy's the best. I swear to God, he's going to crush in your league. He's the best guy in France. I promise. <laughs> 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 Ukraine. Essentially, Premier League clubs are buying up nearly all Europe's best players, and these clubs can't afford to stop them. I know executives of what, by any measure, I would consider big clubs and say Germany. And they're very, very frustrated because every year they will lose their best players to an English club. <laughs> Some already rich and successful clubs in Europe are trying to match the Premier League spending, but it's caused Spain's Barcelona to spiral into a debt crisis and Italy's Juventus was caught fudging its accounting. Europe's other clubs mean- Here's what you need to do. If you're a top German club owner, I'm going to tell you right now, here's what you're going to do. If you find a young upstart talent and you raise him to be one of the greatest players in the world, you need to fake a drug problem. <laughs> you need to start filming like behind the scenes TikToks and shit, showing this guy doing cocaine, crack, whatever, leak them to the press, make it seem like he's a fucking party animal, make it seem like he's an asshole, talk about how he's a worse teammate. That way, they're not going to want him. You get to keep him on your team. They don't pick him up. He's a risk to the brand. And now you're signing him for below market rate. Meanwhile, <laughs> are increasingly choosing to sell their best young players to Premier League clubs, meaning it's harder than ever for them to compete. You can see it happening most clearly. This kind of happened with uh... so Cloud Nine in esports was one of the best uh, teams that figured this out. Cloud Nine Jack figured out that like the real money in esports was not from getting advertisers. Because esports money's esports teams got all this fucking investor money and then spent it really stupidly. So the real money was taking that stupid investor money from other teams. And so what Jack would do would put his best players often in the fucking amateur league so that they would they would get a, a slot in the LCS. Because if you won the amateur league or whatever, you could get uh, a, the academy, you could get like an LCS slot. And he would sell those. He would sell the slot and he would sell developed players. Yeah, he would develop talent in the amateur league and he would sell LCS slots. And both those things made him way more of a bag than trying to get, like, you know, fucking Cheez-Its to sponsor his team. Like, that stuff was small fries compared to just getting, a slight, you know, getting overpaid players and transfer fees. And he, I think Cloud9 was one of the few teams to make money out of that whole fucking overspending era. Because they kept their costs relatively low. They didn't crush, uh, but they made money on, on uh, player signings. Um in the Champions League tournament. Remember back in the 80s when clubs from 16 different countries made the semifinals? In the past 10 years, it was just six. And only these six clubs have won it. Playing in a major Champions League match earns a club millions. So when it's dominated by a handful of rich teams, they get even richer. It definitely affects the competitive balance. Clubs from that significant European leagues it is it is gradually forced them out. This runaway wealth imbalance is why a few rich clubs, including six from the Premier League, tried to break away and form their own Super League back in 2021. <laughs> An outcry by fans forced them to abandon the plans, but the problem didn't go away. We talk in terms of European Super Leagues, but the reality is the Premier League is the European Super League. Right. They've done it! They've done it! Manchester City have done it! The Premier League has announced that it plans to install stricter rules that limit what clubs can spend on players and it might be starting to enforce its rules better. In February 2023, the Premier League charged Manchester City with more than 100 violations of its financial rules, oh. stretching back as far as 2009. If found guilty, it could be relegated. Wow. But restricting spending could just make permanent the advantage the rich clubs already have. It's the Premier League's past willingness to let anyone own a club, 
harder to fix. Once you've opened yourself up to a nation state, buying into your organization, very, very difficult, if not impossible, to stop that. Manchester City completes a historic treble. And I'm not sure that it can be done. It's also like, um, you know, when there's so much money at stake, uh, the financial caps, the way around is what they do is they do like non-financial perks to the players. You know, it's like what they did with uh, college players where they can't technically pay them, but they want to sign the best ones. So they like, you know, they give them a, a house and a car and, and a bunch of shit under the rug. And then they find them like these above market sponsorship deals and things like, you know, they, you know, um, uh, and I think at this level of scale, it would be insane. There's going to be so many weird examples, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just assume the whole thing is corrupt. <laughs> My assumption is that this level of wealth in the sport, this thing's got to be corrupt as shit top to bottom, uh, and just filled with fucking weird gaps, weird loopholes, money laundering. <laughs> uh, there's just too much at stake. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not a fun soccer game anymore. It's fucking... Uh, college person get paid. Yeah, I know they get. I was talking about the search party. Hope you liked it. Glad to have you. I did like it. That was a good video. I learned a lot. Um, interesting. Very interesting. Uh, stoic and wise banger. Only two minutes. Only two minutes. What the hell is this? American Gangster? <laughs> what is this? Anyway, I want to that was interesting. Um, as someone who watched NBA and football, Kylie and Mbappe's early career reminds me of a young LeBron James. Uh, I heard he got a $1.1 billion offer, which is the highest for any athlete ever for one season or one year. Killian? Killian. I don't know. I don't know who he is. I, did he, that's why he wrote it. Uh, he turned it down? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He rejected it? 700 million salary? How do individual people have tens or hundreds of billions and the whole league only generates 6 billion? I think those numbers scaled up. I think it generates more than that now. I think that no, they said six billion in TV fees, bro. So that's six billion in in just the TV rights package, which is probably higher now. That doesn't include ticket sales or merch or anything else. That's just that's just TV rights. Um. Uh, I'm glad he rejected it. Fuck the Saudis trying to sports wash. Yeah, I mean it's insane. I, I've heard that PGA LIV golf thing might get blocked. I hope it does. It's insane if they can just buy their way in <laughs> at that level. It was just, it's literally pure money. Uh, no benefit. Uh, all right, let me, let me watch this. Um... I'm from the this? mean streets of West. Ah, you should have trigger warning me before you showed that. Uh, video on the Drift King. What is this one? This is, um, uh, I've watched Money Game. It's good. We watched it on stream though, so I'm not going to watch it now. Um, um, what was that video called? It was called Chael Sonnen's Unfortunate Upbringing. It has 150,000 views. Um, great video from one of the greats of the last few centuries. YouTube has not been around for... Oh, <laughs> this is my video. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. One of the greats of the last few centuries. Um, vid from a bit on how crazy LeBron's record is. One thousand four. Oh wait! Oh wait! I I don't. If I to asked watch. this one, I started. You see this? It, I started this video and then I wanted to watch it with Chad. I only watched the first minute. It's a Jimmy High Roller video, dude. He made a million dollar shot and they didn't want to pay him. You see this guy right here? This is Don Calhoun. He's a big Bulls fan. 
and he's about to do something that will change his entire life. Look at this. Oh, shit! A million bucks? That young man being hugged has just won a million dollars here at Chicago Stadium. Don just hit a shot from 80 feet That's out. fucking crazy. A three quarters court shot. <laughs> His prize for nailing this absolute bomb one million dollars he can't that's like the coolest thing that can happen to an average person <laughs> to get to go up there during the height of the bulls your favorite team toss a cross court shot everybody pops off michael jordan hugs you that's fucking awesome that's like that literally you could coast on that for 30 years that's so sick can't believe it fans erupt don joins the bulls as they celebrate his victory michael jordan throws his arm around don and congratulates him good shot kid don had just done the impossible and with the game ball in one hand a million dollar check in the other don calhoun did it he was set except he wasn't Due to a technicality in the rules of this contest, the insurance company that was required to make the payoff claimed they simply didn't have to pay the man. Don hit a million fucked. dollar so shot fucked. for absolutely nothing. That's so fucked. This is where I stopped. This is exactly where I stopped because I was like, wait, this is going to be actually hype with chat. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. My brothers, summer is finally here and events are happening every day. Whether you're a baseball fan, you think you could use code Do you think you With a million dollars on the line, Seat Geek. do you think you could sink a three-pointer? Pretty incredible consolation for one simple shot, but no one in their right mind would ever offer such a prize for making a single three-pointer. Except they did. Back in the 90s, during NBA All-Star Weekend, the league and a sponsoring company such as Foot Locker, American Express, Sony, would host a contest for fans. The NBA's $1 million shot. It was one of the most anticipated side events of the entire- It's just a three-pointer? It was just a three-pointer? I mean, I'm not saying I could get 10 out of 10. <laughs> But they do call me Young Steph, dude. I probably could fucking... I could get a three. <laughs> I, I, I think I could fucking... I could pop a three, dude. <laughs> Are you the same age? How old is Steph Curry? How old is Steph Curry? Bro, Steph Curry's way older than me, dude. I'm the same age as Seth Curry. <laughs> His little bro. Weekend and out of the millions of fans who entered to win a shot, only one would be chosen to take it. Get selected, make a three. Yes, Steph Curry's in his 80s. <laughs> yep, that's what I was saying. Not that I could perhaps be younger than Steph Curry at an old age. No, I'm saying Steph Curry's in his 80s, and that's why I'm younger than him. He, it's crazy what he does. He's still out there hooping at 88 years old. He looks great for his age. Pointer win a million dollars an opportunity of a lifetime for four lucky contestants that were selected over the four years that the NBA hosted the contest and to aid them in their quest for a million dollar shot each contestant was joined by a former or active average Sony fan dude <laughs> this dude's this dude's shooting threes and then getting on the console wars on the forums my hero dude <laughs> NBA player to give them pointers and advice. In 1996, among the 6 million entries, 17-year-old Demetrius Houston was selected to take the million dollar shot. Right. With George Gervin by his side and 17,000 fans looking on, Demetrius lines up his shot. And with a million dollars on the line, he clanks it off the backboard. <laughs> Gervin tells the kid not to worry about it, but I'm sure he did. In 1997, a man named Jim Valente was selected to take the million dollar shot. His host and mentor for the event, NBA legend Oscar Robertson. A man who literally never made a three-pointer in his entire NBA career. <laughs> but Jim was focused. It was his wife's birthday. And what better birthday <laughs> gift than a million- The free throw challenge where Shaq is your coach. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> dollar check. So Jim steps up to the line. He's ready. The ways in which he'll spend the million dollars already racing through his mind. I'll get that Corvette I've always wanted. That sure look good in a Rolex. We could really use a new deck out back. Maybe I'll get a boat. Uh... Or maybe you'll get nothing. 
After the shot, Craig Sager asked Jim about his experience. A million dollars, gone. What went wrong, Jim? Give us some insight. How did you feel at the time? What went wrong? I think I just pushed it a little bit right. <laughs> what do you want him to say? It's, <laughs> it's not that deep or poignant. I don't think all the people are like, man, I had it in my hands. Nobody expects to make it. That's... <laughs> Nobody's like, no, my million. It was right there with me. I mean, you're just assuming you're not going to make it. If you make it, it's fucking funny. Uh... In 1998, a contestant named Sol Holkman was selected to take the shot. And for the first time Sony, in the contest Sony. history, a contestant actually hit the rim <laughs> another year another million dollar miss but of all these million dollar shot events none managed to top the one that started it all in 1995. the contestant that was chosen 16 year old mike hoban for weeks leading up to the contest mike spent two hours a day every day shooting three pointers <laughs> accompanied by all-star dan marley mike was sick. locked in Going through the most meticulous shooting routine you'll ever see in your life, Mike prepares his shot by, quote, becoming one with the basket. <laughs> At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulled a microscope out and studied the hoop to better his odds. Now he's taking phantom shots. His routine is becoming more unhinged by the second, but it works for him. Friends and family look on, watching Holy him live shit, on TV, watching. ready to witness history unfold. <laughs> Mike is yeah, ready. The pressure's got to be crazy. Up the shot. You only get one shot. Oh. And misses the rim by two feet. An air ball. The poor kid is devastated. Friends and family are stunned. All the while, the commentator of the event. Bro, that's so much pressure. That's so much pressure. I got your whole fucking friends and family watching in a crowd. You get one shot, no warm up with the ball. Oh, that's fucking... ...doing his best to help, but instead just pours on a slew of more disappointment in the process. So young Mike Holman has missed his shot at a million dollars. The good news is, though, he doesn't win money, doesn't become a pro, and his college scholarship hopes stay alive. He'll go back to be the post-up player for his junior varsity team. After the shot, Sager <laughs> interviews the kid, <laughs> where he has the bright idea of just... That's rude. The kid's 16, bro. Relax. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just asking for one more shot. I wasn't really in that zone I wanted to be in, but, you know, one more shot. You would like one more shot, wouldn't you? Man, I would love another shot. <laughs> You'd like one more shot, wouldn't you? <laughs> Mike never got another shot. Oh, Four <laughs> I was like, wait, then they don't taunt him with it, bro. <laughs> You'd like one more, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? <laughs> Contestants, a million dollars on the line for one three-pointer and zero winners. And looking back on these contests, it's pretty remarkable that no one hit their million dollar shot because countless fans and contestants have hit much more difficult shots for far less money. We've all seen these contests unfold in person. A fan gets randomly chosen out of the stands to come down and try to hit That's a half-court shot. The prize money, nowhere near a million dollars. Usually the prize is 10,000. Almost like the million makes it harder because it puts the pressure on, you know? Million dollars, you give them some time to warm up. They, they Yeah, they're not pro athletes, they're gonna choke, bro. But 10K and nobody expects you to do it. You just yeet it out. Well, there's a good chance you make it. Thousand dollars or maybe twenty thousand dollars or a car. This Mavericks fan hit a layup, a free throw, a three-pointer, and a half-court shot in sequence without missing. Put him on the fucking team. <laughs> Forget the fucking 10K. Give him a contract, dude. Get Mark Cuban down and sign him. That's consistency. <laughs> <laughs> he's five six he's got heart dude an anomaly of events in this context his reward for the incredible feat three thousand dollars worth of gift cards to a local furniture store <laughs> but it gets worse because at a mavs game a few years later this woman was put to the task of sinking a half court shot she's rocking the dirt gear she's feeling good beautiful form and drills the shot oh wow nothing but net 
What was her prize for pulling this off, you ask? A 65 inch flat screen TV. <laughs> Absolutely appalling. This guy managed to drill a half court shot at a Blazers game years ago and won round trip tickets to anywhere of his choice. A pretty unlikely shot from the guy, but far from impossible. What is impossible, however, is the fact that another fan hit the same exact shot 30 seconds later. <laughs> it's clear that some people actually make these shots. So what would happen if someone actually did hit a million dollars? Kind of sucks for that second, that first guy, because the second guy kind of steals your thunder. <laughs> it doesn't seem that cool or hard if somebody does it right after immediately. Like, you've only, you only been celebrating for 30 seconds, you're like hugging your family, and then someone else does it, and it's like, oh, I guess it's... <laughs> People aren't gonna know how cool that was. Dollar shot. What if instead of shelling out some gift cards or a flat screen TV, a team had to actually hand over a seven figure check yeah. to one lucky fan? Yeah. It's April 14th, 1993. The Bulls are facing the Heat in Chicago. The Bulls are on a roll coming into the matchup on a three-game win streak. By halftime, Chicago is up by 14. Jordan okay. is killing the Heat, 22 points in the first half. It's a great time for home fans as usual, but the real spectacle is about to take place. Throughout the 93 season, the Bulls hosted a promotion for their fans. Among the 18,000 fans in attendance for any given home game, one lucky individual would be chosen to shoot a three-quarters court shot to win $1 million. At the time, and to this day even, a million dollar cash prize for such an event is unheard of. But right. the odds of such a shot going in are so astronomically unlikely that the Bulls and the insurance company that would be responsible for paying out the prize money felt comfortable running the event anyways. Leading uh. up to that heat matchup, 19 lucky fans had attempted the halftime million dollar shot. Of the 19, two hit the backboard, 16 were air balls, and just one even hit the rim. An <laughs> estimate of a fan chosen at random hitting this shot, less than 1%. And so a member of the Bulls organization- Less than 1% though, th that means like around every 100 times. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, unless it's way under, unless it's 0.0001. You know what I'm saying? If it's just around 1%, that's, you're gonna be doing this, you know, every season. Yeah, it's like once every three years, assuming it's around one. Yeah, but if it's like less than half a percent, they would have said that. So I'm assuming it's between like half a percent and one percent. So... ...organization went into the crowd and selected a 23-year-old local by the name of Don Calhoun. The reason for selecting him? His shoes wouldn't scuff up the floor. Hopeful, but <laughs> understanding the slim odds that he faced, Don walked down to the court <laughs> and prepared to take his shot. A fun well, half... if you're worried... If you're worried about losing the million dollars, don't pick the one fan who's got basketball shoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you want to be sure you're not going to pick somebody that can hoop, then don't skimp out on the scuffed floor. Halftime gimmick, something to keep the fans involved. They just slapped a million dollars on there to get everyone excited, but no one will ever hit the shot anyways. Chris Hammond, vice president of SCA Promotions, a leader in the promotional contest industry, looks back on the shot saying, the perfect contest is like the most tempting carnival game, just feasible enough to make people think they can do it while actually being extremely difficult. You could have Steph Curry out there and still make money. Well, <laughs> Mr. Hammond, it's time to pay up. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't make sense though, because you don't make, you don't profit on this. The fan either wins a million or you win zero. There's no, <laughs> the fan doesn't pay you for attempts. You know what I'm saying? So no, you couldn't make money if Steph Curry's out there because he's going to make a couple of them and you're going to lose two million and they don't. <laughs> oh, the insurance premium. Ah, wait, Hammond's with the insurance company, not with the, he's with the promotions. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Persons is the insurance. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. He gets the insurance premium. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. They make some small amount, and then they... Okay. A million bucks. Well, that young man how about that, Hammond? How about that?
million dollar thrill. In what is possibly the most inconceivable occurrence to ever happen on an NBA That's court, hype. Don That's Calhoun hype. drilled an 80 foot shot for a million dollars. The hype. whole place goes nuts. For a moment, it's like Don is part of this Bulls team and they just <laughs> won another championship. Yeah, it's like he's on the team. Damn, that's so cool. I can't believe they screwed him. He better get his money. I hope this video ends positively. Even the ref of the game comes over to congratulate him. The man just did the impossible. A million dollars. That's more than half the guys on this roster made that year. <laughs> and with the job complete, Don heads over. To Damn, I forgot the salaries were smoking. That's actually a hype, dude. You actually get to look at the team. <laughs> I made five extra salary, bitch. <laughs> Put me on the team. <laughs> the snap a photo with the check in one hand and the game ball in the other. He did it. Bro, once you hand him the fucking check, it's over. He should be allowed to cash it. At least that's what he thought. See, these promotions are combed through meticulously by some of the best lawyers money can buy. The rules and restrictions are tight. Break one of them and you can kiss those winnings goodbye. Don Calhoun broke one of the rules. What was the rule? Not intentionally or anything, but among the stipulations of this promotion, one of them states that the contestant could not have played organized basketball within five years of the contest. And just three years prior to this contest, Don was a member of the Triton community basketball team. The contest people knew this. Don acknowledged this by marking the information on the contest form. But the contest people shrugged it off and gave him the shot anyways. The insurance people, however... That's so... Fucking sleazy. That is so sleazy. He put it on the contest form. Therefore, you chose him. Therefore, it's okay. He should be eligible to win. Especially if afterwards you hand him the check. That's sleazy. Also, community college ball does not like professional fucking... He's not... In the spirit of how this is written, he is not violation. Did not. To them, it was a clear breach of the rules. Don should have never been selected in the first place. And so the insurance company of the event disqualified Don out of his shot and out of his million dollars. When news broke that the now local legend would not be receiving his money, fans were livid. As reports on the event grew, fan outrage grew with it. And Thank within God. a week, the Bulls organization was under so much local pressure that they held a press conference announcing that they actually had a change of hearts and they would pay up. Let's go! A very strange and inexplicable decision considering their stance just a few days prior. Don's million dollars split into 20 payments over the next 20 years. His first check for $50,000 was sent out that week. Technically, rules were broken, but Don was getting paid and he had no idea how or why. A year after his miraculous shot, Don heard that Michael Jordan would be in the area for one of his son's basketball games. A perfect opportunity for Don to get his million dollar game ball signed. So Don pulled up to the game in search of Michael, but with security flocking the NBA star, no fans were getting anywhere near him. But Don wasn't just an ordinary fan. He's the guy who hit the million dollar shot. <laughs> Jordan recognized him in the stands and had security bring him over after the game. Oh, that's fucking with his awesome. ball in hand, hoping to get an <laughs> autograph, Don approached Michael. But MJ didn't call him over to give him an autograph. Instead, he had to ask Don a question. Did you get your money? A year after the Bulls had their change of heart and decided to pay him his money, Don finally got an answer why. Turns out the insurance company wasn't the one who paid Don. They never intended to. After hearing about what the insurance company was trying to pull, Michael Jordan along with other players on the Bulls told ownership they needed to pay up. And so the organization did, Whoa. out of their own pockets. Legally, the parties involved were within their rights to void the payments altogether, but Michael felt like what they were doing wasn't right. And so we made it right. That's my goat, bro. That's my goat. That's fucking awesome. Damn, he had no reason to do that. That's fucking, that's goat behavior. That's cool. I'm glad this guy got his money. It's so fucked to insurance fucking squirrel out the fucking money that's obviously owed to the guy. If it wasn't for Michael approaching ownership and demanding they pay Don his money, he would have never seen a cent of that million dollars. So it turns out that even if it was for a brief moment, Don Calhoun was a part of the Bulls. Seeking nothing in return, Michael and the rest of the players looked out for Don. Oh, and that autograph Don wanted, a couple weeks later, he got that too.
Sheesh. So what happens if someone actually makes one of those inconceivable million dollar shots? Well, one way or another, they get paid. That was a great video. Rarely does it have a happy ending like that. That's awesome. Good shit. Uh, obviously a big Michael Jordan fan after watching, especially Last Dance, but it's cool to see the side of him other than just the hyper-competitive. <laughs> you know, that's a cool, that's a nice thing to do. It's just good for the sport, too. I mean, you just, you know what I'm saying? All future contests like that would be tainted forever because of the fact that you're probably not, like, when the guy wins and it changes his life, it makes everyone excited. It makes more stakes for the future ones. Uh, okay, it's 9.42. I think we're going to watch House MD. Oh, actually, here's what I'm going to do. I have 15 minutes. I'm going to start a Hitman run. I know I haven't done Hitman in a while. I know nobody wants to see it. <laughs> but I finally got my items back. And so I'm going to do one fucking run. You know, I've been de-rusting a little bit. I practiced. And uh, I really think, I just want, you know, I currently have uh, the second best time in the world with 33 minutes. It got beat by an incredible Gen P run. But I can't, I don't have any video that isn't covered with economics podcasts. So I want to hit like a live one for a video that hopefully can be in that range. So I'm going to do a run um, and then we're going to watch House MD. Uh, and I promise I will not do a million runs. I'm just going to do you know, one or two, unless it gets going, then I'll keep it going. But, um, so let's see, let's open this up. Uh, FY, the next house episode has some song suicide trigger warnings. What does that mean? Song suicide trigger warnings. Like a like like a fucking Kurt Cobain song or something. What what does that mean? Uh, strong. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, uh, we will. Everyone has a different trigger warning before every house episode. Like this one has racism or this one has. So just tell me before we start. We'll tell it the chat and they can decide if they want to watch. All right. Deal. Hmm. Uh, lupus warning. <laughs> uh, is this the one where house is an asshole? Yeah, I mean, you get it. You're getting the gist. You're getting the gist. Okay. Um, let's see here. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba 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 Let's get everything ready to play a little bit of world record. What if I just get it right now? What if I just fucking slam it home right now? Kind of like my half court shot, if you will. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what if I just half court shot it right here, right now? Uh, does this work? Oh. Uh, thank you for the $5. Got a song for you, A Meister. Mm, interesting. What is this song you've got for me? I bet it's not going to call me glizzy hands or old or talk about how... <laughs> um, I wear flannel or any of that. It's going to be like really complimentary. Let's see what we got here. If you don't mind me saying so, your particular choice of attire is maybe a little... Everything is under control. Please report to the big dog. Stop it to us. Excellent work, 47. You've spread fear. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Return to the safe house. Collect your safe. Alright, how do we play that ten more times? Uh I'm resetting. 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 That's a bad that's a bad spawn. Kill a clown. On record pace. Uh, no, I'm not resetting the song. <laughs> Don't worry about that. 
Uh, thank you for the song, though. Let me thank you. Uh, the creator of that song is... Wait, I just lost it. Fuck. If you don't mind me saying so. You're... Lonely Loaf! <laughs> uh, Lonely Loaf. Thank you for the prime, Ski Lord. Ditch that one run pause. It's not about one run. It's about going till basically 10 o'clock, bro. Get with the program. So many verses got to respect it. I did respect it. Uh, VIP or mod would be good, really. <laughs> okay, I didn't offer you anything, so you don't need to say. If I offered you a million dollars and you said, no, it's okay. I just want VIP or mod. That'd be fine. That's different. If I say thanks for the song and there's no offer, you don't say, okay, VIP or mod would be good. You know what I'm saying? That's upselling. Uh... First doesn't count. Obviously doesn't count, bro. Relax. You just... I need to get a couple warm-up runs in. And also, what we've started to realize about this run is you just really need a lot of luck. <laughs> There's actually just no getting around it. You just need a lot of luck to get good target spawns and good maps. There's just no... No matter how much you route... Uh, you just got to spawn near the targets and near an exit. <laughs> that's, that's just the, that's the end fucking game game of it. Anyway, if you guys don't know, this is Hitman Freelancer Hardcore, the hardest mode Hitman's ever created. You have to beat 18 missions in a row on hardcore difficulty. They're all randomized every time. Uh, so every player will have a different... One every time, different targets, different maps, different weapons. Um, it's extremely difficile. You know what to do, forty-seven. Is this guy inside or what? Oh, that's annoying. Is it possible, Silent Assassin? What do you mean possible? <laughs> Certainly not for a speed run. <laughs> Right? You know, the goal would be to win. Oh, this guy's right here. I see. Relax. Well done, okay, we gotta keep moving. Surely be a blow to we gotta city. keep moving. We're gonna get shot and we're gonna die. Don't move. Keep, nope, you relax. Can't be here, sir. Quick shot. Quick shot. Excellent Excuse work, me. 47. Thank you. You've spread fear within the syndicate. Syndicate member eliminated. Get down. Well so I need to get out the first mission under get two minutes. I'll be in touch. Okay, fine. Perfect. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. The goal, the goal, if you guys want a simple understanding of like what I'm looking for, is around two minutes per mission. If it's above that, it's bad. If it's below that, it's amazing. Two minutes is your is your barometer. The syndicate took a serious blow, but there is still much work to be done. Uh, and prepare for your next assignment. Mm. I'll be in touch when you reach your The problem is you have a little bit of menuing time in between and you have to like fucking pick your items and shit. Wouldn't 30 seconds per mission be better? Yes, you're right. No, you should get the world record. If you just get Welcome Oh, wait. To fuck. New York. No, wait, fuck. Intel tells us that there are syndicate members in the area. I trust that you can find them and eliminate. Okay, we're looking for a target. One down this here. Not going to be easy. Previous one down here, one up there. Rate. So you need to be uh, third yeah. guy is hopefully not third floor. Second floor, okay. This is winnable. This guy you can shoot without being seen. And they don't figure it out till later. So I can get out. Killer clown, no record pace. We're actually on a good pace right now. One target there. 
One target here. Oh, shit. Okay, I got a plan. Come look at me. Come look at me. Come look at me. Follow me. Follow me, lady. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Fuck it. Dangerous. Syndicate member eliminated. Go. Well done, 47. Get back to the safe house. I'll be in touch. Speedy. Speedy pace. Speedy pace. Speedy pace. Speedy pace. Speedy pace. Well played. Excellent pace. Uh, 325? So we're like 35 seconds ahead of where we should be? That's good. Time trial is good. We now have information on Why is red split so high? Oh, these splits aren't right, but whatever. Have a good trip, 47. Um, just think about the, the two-minute thing. Like, after three missions, it should be six minutes. That's the general pace you should think about. Mm. Why don't you just do that for the next 16 missions? It's randomized. So some are going to suck. You understand? However, Some are going to be terrible. Exact okay. This means you will have so there's three targets way. right here. But so I need to panic them to find out which one is the thing to save time. So I'm going to blow up the fire extinguisher in this garage. Well, we know this. Like so. They are attending a covert meeting. We also know that they have... One of them. Okay. 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 So it is one of them, and they're 50 meters away. It's that guy right there, I think. Right? Good luck. You need to hurry. Target is trying to escape. It's not. Who the fuck is it? Wait, who the fuck is it? It's that guy. It's that guy right there. Ah, shit. The has been fuck! <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. We got F? We had F? Damn, I tried. Uh, it was an F? We lost people? Okay, we're good. <clears throat> Goodbye, guns. You don't lose your guns. You do not lose your guns. <clears throat> All right, one more, one more. It's 97. One more, one more, one more. One more run. One more run, one more run, one more run. So that was kind of unlucky because, again, every time you panic a target, they choose a random exit to run to. That person was standing right next to the bridge exit and then chose the bridge exit. So they were only, they, you know, there was nowhere to, there was nowhere to stop them. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, we're watching house today. Mm, but I have time to start my next run. Get out, Holy Pangolin. Dun, 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 dun. I'll show you the title. Title is Getting World Record, then Watching House MD. Okay. Oh, skip. They do not choose closest exit, they choose random exit. Yeah, good question. All right, here we go. Just need some... Oh, this is a good one. Berlin, Dartmoor, Mendoza. Three, two, one. Terrible. So, also, let me just say what I'm doing here. So, I picked three maps, right? I'm trying to pick maps that are small, that have a good chance of being fast. But the number of targets on each map, see this, is randomized. So, if it says four, that just fucking sucks. Like, because it could be two and be really fast. So, I'm kind of resetting till I get small maps with, like, two targets. Now, once the run starts, you can't really do that anymore. So you kind of want to do it a lot for the first syndicate, just so you get a good start. Timer running? It doesn't matter. It reset. It'll reset. And I used to not do this. It's called being a picky Peter, uh, according to a Spectacore. But now he does it all the time. Everyone does it all the time. There's kind of no reason not to do it because it makes your run so much better. 
is okay, I guess. Yeah, PP. Three, four, no. So we're looking for good. We need like, I mean, my dream is like Mendoza, Colorado, Whittleton. And they all have two targets. That's a good start. That's like a fucking killer start. Mm, only one run. Listen, relax. Let me just get a good run going. Oh, this is good. Four, three, four. Fucking cringe. <laughs> Fucking cringe. Um, looking for something good. Looking for something juicy. Chongqing, Dubai, Whittleton. Okay. Yeah, 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 good, 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 good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three, two. Have a good trip, forty-seven. No way you think Colorado was good. I rated Colorado A tier before anyone else, and they laughed at me. And then Spectacor called me today and told me he thinks I was right. Welcome to Chongqing. Okay. Uh, one guy in the basement, one guy right there. And take them down. This is pretty but shitty. They are on high alert. This might be a reset. Or they will slip away. Don't disappoint. We'll is that guy negative two? Good luck. Negative three. Yeah, I'm walking out. <laughs> I'm not gonna drive. I'm walking out. We are not watching House Hunters. We're watching House MD after this. I haven't got one fucking run yet. This doesn't count. I need to get one run. One real honest run. What rating is Chong King? I give it like B. It's usually pretty fast unless you get one of the negative three ones. As you failed your campaign 47, the syndicates got away. However, I'm sure you Just give me a good the problem is. There's just so, there's so much RNG in this run. It's very fun when you get going, but you really have to get some luck to get started. Kind of like owning a football club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, this isn't good enough. I need a good one. Ooh, Haven, Mendoza, Whittleton. Okay, this is good. This is good. Two targets. Hello. Give me a give me a ducky. No, I don't want that. I'll be in touch when you reach your destination. Okay. On Haven with two targets. Sometimes you can get these crack starts where nobody's in the underground bunker. Everyone is visible from the beach. I just snipe, snipe, and leave. Give me that. Welcome to the Maldives. Okay, target. Target so one right there, one right there. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. But they are on high alert. So tread carefully or they will slip away. Don't disappoint. Oh, he's on a fucking... Good luck. He's on a jet ski! I can't, I can't hit him! He's on a jet ski! <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, dude! Syndicate member eliminated. Park! Well done, 47. <laughs> I'm so mall. Oh. Excellent work, 47. You've spread fear. Actually cracked? <laughs> no, you guys don't NIA me. There's nothing you can do. He's on a fucking jet ski. He's moving lightning speed. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking lead him with a sniper. <laughs> Either way. Submit it, baby. That's cracked. Mm, this is why he doesn't play Valorant. They don't ride around on jet skis in Valorant. I want you to know that. Bro was just trying to have fun on a jet ski and you Let took him out. Yeah, that's the real syndicate behavior. Whittleton for two! 
Wait a minute. 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 This is a crack start. This is a crack start. Two two target spawns. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Attached. Attached to the run. Too soon. 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 Welcome to Whittle Target, Creek. target, target. The one there, one there. <gasps> oh, the oh, oh, oh. Find them and easy. Eliminate. This is easy. But this is easy. They're on high alert. So tread carefully or they will slip away. You know what to do, 47. Oh, no. Fuck it. Excellent work, 47. You've spread fear within the syndicate. Okay, go 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 Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Attached? Excellent work back there, 47. Let me know when you're ready to continue. Parking lot spawn? Parking lot spawn? Well done. Parking lot spawn? We now know Pause shit, parking lot spawn? The syndicate leader. Bon voyage, 47. Parking lot spawn? Parking lot spawn. Parking lot spawn. Hog tied to this run, dude. Hog tied. Handcuffed to this run. Cannot get away. Welded to this run. Parking lot, though? Welcome to the Shrine, Yates, okay. Argentina. The worst of all options. We have managed to locate the leader. However, their identity is unknown. So to but you, still fine. Because of the new... Dope clown suit exit? Okay. Nine targets. Only one in a bad spot. We, have the following we just have to play the odds. They are here to attend a business meeting. We also have <laughs> Oh baby! Chuck him PC. And glasses. We also know that the target Chuck him PC. They see themselves Hacker. Officially proven. Atriox scandal part two. He learned from Dream how to hack. Okay, well, that to me looks like a 338 first syndicate. Disgusting. Disgusting. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. The syndicate has been eliminated. However, I have intel that there are more connected. Finish the job. Take them all down and you will be... That is a foul first syndicate. When you're ready. Now I'm going to get a bunch of four target like fucking Mumbai's or something, but <laughs> at the least I got to briefly think it was good. Uh, shit. Okay. These are all bad. Uh, fuck. God damn it. All right. Mumbai for three. God damn it. God damn it. Losing time. Close all of your apps and forget about the world record. <laughs> My fucking pitch is perfect. This is about to be the cleanest Mumbai. All right, come on. Come on, give me a good Mumbai. If I can get through this Mumbai, all of a sudden we're attached. All of a sudden we're attached. The rest of the maps are easy. Mumbai is... Mumbai is the only problem. Give me a fast Mumbai. Do not put him up in fucking Rangan's tower. Come on! Give me a good Mumbai. Welcome to Mumbai. What's the fucking timer going the in the loading? Is currently operating in the area. Find them uh, the one market. here. That's good. But be careful. They're on high alert. We don't want them to slip away. Be careful, 47. Excellent work, 47. You've spread fear. One down. Syndicate. One's there, one's there. This is actually not bad. That guy's near an exit. Get this guy. Get over there. Leave. I think I could do this 90 seconds. I think I can do this 90 seconds. Oh, he's in the basement. He's actually a terrible spawn. Oh, fuck! Oh, I thought he was ground floor, but he's basement fucking floor. Oh, fucking cringe as hell. 
Okay. Well. That. I don't think I know you. No, you don't know me. And let's keep it that way, buddy. I would pay a lot of rupees. All right, it's fighting time. Ah, shit. Okay. What's my plan? <laughs> What's the plan? <laughs> What's the fucking plan? Uh, okay. Keep moving. Keep moving. Can we get it sub two? Can we get it sub two and we're still on track? This is not... This is not terrible. This is not... Terrible. But it is awful, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Uh... Okay. I do think I'm going to die. Oh. Syndicate member eliminated. Okay. Okay. Get back to the safe house. I'll be in touch. Sub two thirty, maybe, and we just. Ah shit! No, stop! Stop shooting me! Okay, so three three minutes. <laughs> Mumbai sucks, dude. Uh, still salvageable. Still salvageable. Still salvageable. Still salvageable. Still salvageable. Still salvageable. That was I played that well. All right. So we needed eight minutes by now. We're at seven fourteen. That means we're still ahead of pace. We're still good. We just lost a lot of our lead. We went from a minute forty eight ahead to about forty seconds ahead. We lost a minute. Impressive work, forty seven. Okay. Let me know when you're ready for your next. Assignment. Give me a fast one. Dubai for four. Uh, ice pick kill. Okay, this is not good. Dubai for four ice pick kill. Simp, please, in chat. What's up, big simp? Is he? I don't know if he is. But either way, hi, simply, if you are here. Um. Sorry, you were trolling. Welcome okay, sorry. Uh, one guy on zero, one guy on zero, one guy on zero, one guy on one. Okay, 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 okay. Doable. Doable, 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 doable. Doable, 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 doable. Doable, 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 doable. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Don't let him take control of me. What a shot. This will surely be a What a shot. Okay. Need ice pick kill right here. Excellent work, forty seven. You've spread fear within the syndicate. Ah, shit. I forgot about the camera. Uh, I gotta kill you. Gotta kill you and gotta kill that guy. Okay. Ah, shit. Shit. Uh, getting this guy is gonna be hard. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You should get back to the safe house. I'll contact you later. Oh, bad. Oh, bad. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Fucking hell, yes! Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we blasted our way out on that one. That was a little bit intense. 
Uh, but we got it pretty fast. Pretty fast, all things considered. It was four targets. It was Dubai. A lot of guards in the way. Excellent work back there. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Again, we're just salvaging bad RNG. Two target haven. That's good. Duck, duck. Oh, that's fucking good. We did lose the ice pick, so I need to knock it ice pick kill again. Have a good trip, 47. <laughs> Again, my goal would be to beat Second Syndicate under 12 minutes. And right now, I think we are on pace for that. Barely. Barely, 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 barely. Uh, okay, target, 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 target. One there. One there. Oh! Find them and eliminate. But they are on high alert. So tread carefully or they will slip away. Be careful, 47. Syndicate member eliminated. Well, oh, baby! Well done, 47. This will surely be a blow to the syndicate. Get back to the safe house. I'll be in touch. Nice! Nice! Okay. Okay. That gave us some time. That puts us back in a really, really fast pace. Give me a good show. Give me a fucking parking lot, bro. Impressive work, 47. Let me know when you're ready for your next assignment. You've done well, 47. Sniper kill. We now have nice. We kept the duck, too. Very nice. I'll be very nice. When you reach your very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Really good start. Really good start. Really good pace. Uh, parking lot spawn would be great. Parking lot spawn, because we're not going to get lucky again on the other one. Parking lot would be great. Welcome mm, to okay. Benito Yates, Argentina. Fuck it. Good work, 47. We ball. We finally tracked down the syndicate leader's whereabouts. However, we do not know the exact identity of the target, so you'll have to do some recon. However, this is no walk in the park. They are on high alert. Oh, it's so not... You need to be careful. None of them? Nevertheless. None of them? You know this. They are here uh, maybe that lady or maybe this person? Their identity. We know that they have no hair. They are wearing earrings. It's they are wearing oh, glasses shit. and wearing a hat. Okay. As to habits and vices, your target is agitated and nervous. Is and that guy? Smoke. I hope this will help. It's got. It's got to be that guy. Cause if it's that guy, we're fucked. Oh wait, wait, wait. No, it's got to be that guy. Okay, okay, running out of time. Got it. It's always the last place you look. <laughs> well done. 47. Return to the safe house. Collect yourself. I'll be in touch. Oh shit. No! Fucking hell. Wait. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Oh fuck. Okay, 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 okay. 12 minutes flat. Okay. We're, we're on pace. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hmm. Excellent, forty-seven. You took down the syndicate, but we have intel. I speak. We got it back. Connected. Eliminate them all. You will be well rewarded. Prepare and let me know when you are ready. Okay. Uh, looking for something good. This one's bad. Uh, this one's bad. This one. Oh, none of these are good. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, these are all bad. Shit. Uh, it gotta be this. That's really terrible. Scale for four runs ripped. Oh, uh, four, 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 two. I'll try it, but that's. That sucks. That sucks. Fucking RNG, bro. Scale for four. Bon voyage, 47. <sighs> I'll try. I mean, I'll just see what happens. Maybe I get lucky, but I think I think this is a rip. Yeah, RNG on the speedrun is tough. It's tough. Could still get lucky. But scale for four is almost always a run killer. Welcome. The Isle of Scale. All right, let's see what we got. We got um, 
find them and take them down. This feels but this is not going to be easy. actually let's be open minded. Let's be open minded. This could be doable. So you need to be tactical. This could be doable. Be careful, 47. Is that? Hey, that's had to be what the hell? This here. Are you to blame? No, this? no, that wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Leave me alone. It wasn't me. Yo, security guard. What? Leave me alone. 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 Christ sakes. Excuse me. Can I get some help over here? Okay, two up there, one down there. Ugh, this is miserable. I can maybe get in three minutes if I just play like a fucking golden god. Nope, I'm dead. I'm dead, 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 this will surely be a blow to the Syndicate. Excellent work, 47. You've Ooh. spread fear Ooh, the he's cooking. Wait, the guy Didn't fell? <gasps> the body I needed fell! Oh, that's so frustrating! Oh, it fell! Oh, I needed that fucking disguise! Can I hit this from up here? Imagine. No. Okay. I think. I think. I think. The only thing to do is drop the sniper. I have to leave the sniper behind. It's the only way. It's the only way. They've called a recess. It's the only way to get it out of here in time. If only I brought two. <laughs> if only I brought two. Oh my god. I'm so frustrated. Well done, 47. This will surely be a blow to the Syndicate. Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, not terrible. Good work back there. The Syndicate took a serious blow. But there is still more Paris for four. Recuperate and prepare for your Headshot kill. Legendary. I get dealer sniper. Bon voyage, 47. I need a song. Pump me up. Pump me up. Pump me up. Get us back into this.
Sir, you're not. Sir, I'm talking. If you do not leave. Relax. Everyone relax. He's right there. What the hell? Calm. Do exactly what I tell you. Are you telling me? Excellent work, 47. Uh, one guy up you there. Fear within the syndicate. Where's the other guy? One guy up there. One guy up there. One's the other guy. One guy over there. Okay. Sorry. Over here! <laughs> Sir, this is off limits. Contact! Get regroup! And hit hard! Okay. Okay. Syndicate member eliminated. Okay. Well done, forty-seven. Excuse me. Well done, forty-seven. This will surely be a blow to the syndicate. Okay. You should get back to the safe house. I'll contact you later. Okay. No, hey, Mister. Who are you again? No, 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 no. Give up handguns. Okay. <sighs> okay, kind of gaming out of my mind. Uh, kind of gaming out of my mind, but I'm just not getting the good. Good work back there. The syndicate took a serious blow. But there is still much work to do. Chonking for four. And prepare for your next assignment. Fuck me, dude. Okay, wait, I lost my sniper. It took my sniper! Oh I took I left with it. It <sighs> Bon voyage 47. Oh god damn it. I had it in my briefcase. That sucks. That sucks. That sucks. That sucks. Oh god, I have no sniper for showdown. What's up, Ask? ASK. Welcome to Chong. Four targets. Four targets. One there. Is currently operating in the area. Find them and eliminate. But they are on high alert. So tread carefully or they will slip away. You know what to do, 47. Excellent work, 47. Where's the other? Where's the other people? Within the syndicate. Oh, one guy there. Okay, that's two down. One guy up there. Wait a minute. 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 He's gaming. He's gaming. Well done, 47. This will surely be a blow to the syndicate. Grab the brick. Check this out. 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 Right don't die. Don't die. Let's go. Let's go. Where's my target? Where is he? Oh, he's down a floor. Fuck. 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 Excellent work, 47. You've spread Uh, this is bad. Get back to the safe house. I'll be in touch. Uh, this is bad. Dude, these are all like two minute missions. Ugh, that's so annoying. I'm playing out of my goddamn gourd. The only way I make a comeback on this is if on Syndicate 4 it's all cracked. Ah, 
God, that was that was a good. I mean, that route, blam, blam, roof, blam, brick skip to the floor, get to the basement, blam. That's a route, dude. Excellent work back there, 47. Let me know when you're ready to continue. Hokkaido for two. Hokkaido for two. Give me a duck. Okay, whatever. Bon voyage. Okay. Okay. It sucks because it's like the best I've played <laughs> on stream. And I'm getting probably the worst RNG I've gotten. Uh, oh, hello. Speaking of good RNG, though. However, this is no walk in the park. They are on high alert, so you need to be careful. One guy left. One guy left. One guy left. Is he by the helicopter? That would be so sick. Excellent work, 47. You've spread fear within the syndicate. Oh, he's just this guy. Oh, he's just this guy. Well done, 47. This will surely be a uh, do I do this? Fuck. I think you I do. Get back to the safe house. This could be really I'll stupid. This could be the stupidest thing I've ever done. But it's the fastest exit, so... I think this is so stupid. I'm gonna go for it. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Nice! <laughs> okay, good. Good, 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 good. Impressive work, 47. That helps. That helps a lot to get back in the good graces. Give me a parking lot spawn, bro. Uh, uh, escaping? Escaping, I guess. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Escaping. Ah, shit. Okay, I have to do it. I need parking lot spawn. Oh, God, I need parking lot spawn. Wait, I need parking lot spawn. Please, please. I never, I never, I never, I never asked for much. You give me so much bad RNG game. Parking lot spawn. You gotta get a parking lot spawn. I, I need parking lot spawn. 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 Parking lot. Parking lot. Parking lot. Parking lot. Come on, 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 come on. Please, 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 please. Yes. Benito Yates. Yes. Argentina. This is the last. Okay, run still alive. We now know the leader's location. Run However, still alive. Run still alive. Run still alive. To make sure you get the right target. However, they're on high alert, so you need to be careful. On the other hand, we do know this: they are here to attend a business meeting. We also have the following description on their looks. We know that they have no hair. They are wearing glasses. Baldy. They are wearing earrings and wearing a necklace. Wait. As for characteristics, Baldy. we know the target is a smoker, and Wait, they who? like to read. Be it keeping up with the times or simply wanting to be inspired. Use these okay. traits to your advantage. You know what to do, 47. The leader is eliminated. Well done. Sheesh! Okay, okay, okay. Give me a sniper. Give me a sniper back on the box and give me a lot of two targets. And this is actually still doable as a good run. I don't know about world record well done, run, because that the third syndicate sucked. However, I have nice intel sniper. Cushion duck. Give me a good one. Give me a good one. Mendoza, Whittleton, Dubot. This is pretty good. Uh, uh, also pretty good. Actually, wow. Wow, that's amazing. Fuck it! <laughs> Uh, even for four. Alright, Berlin for three. Alright, uh, hide and seek. There was actually a lot of good ones. I don't even know which one I should have picked. I need to review the tape. Someone clipped that so I could take a look and see what I should have picked. I think that was a good one, though. I picked a good one. Haven for four is going to be a bitch, but... Berlin, no guy in the forest. Or it actually kills the run yet again. No forest guy. Just need luck. I just need a lot of luck on this fourth syndicate. Intel tells us that there are syndicate members in the area. I trust one guy there, one guy there, one guy there. Okay. But watch your step. 
They're on high alert. What do you Well done, This will surely be a blow to the syndicate. Gotta get upstairs. Over there! No. Over there! What the fuck? Get him! He teleported! Excellent work, 47. You've spread fear. I need trank, I need trank, I need trank, I need trank. Go, 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 go. Uh, actually, crack time. If I get up there fast enough and get the fucking key. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? He's right there. <gasps> this is perfect. This is perfect. Syndicate member eliminated. Let's go. Well done, 47. Get back to the safe house. Let's go. She's brutal, efficient. John Wick. Blam, blam, blam. Move, move, move. Okay. <clears throat> that helps. That helps on time for sure. Impressive work you did back there. I'm ready when you've prepped the next assignment. Dartmoor for three. Time trial. A duck would be great. Yes. Yes. Okay, I don't need any more ducks. One duck should last me. I'll be in touch when you okay. reach your destination. Give me a good Dartmoor. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Give me, give me a chance. Give daddy a chance at the run, bro. Seven with the AK-47, Brandon's age is 47. Okay, kind of cracked though. <laughs> Can we be honest? Don't shoot. Ah, shit. I had to, I had to, I had to. They kill too fast on that level. Agent 47 with that AK-47, Brandon Dages for uh, Haven for four is kind of a run killer, but not if we believe in ourselves. Haven for four. Trip, oh, man. If one of them's in the bunker, I do think the run is ripped. If one's in the bunker... Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I I don't think this is a world record, but I do think this is a solid run. Maybe we'll see if we finish it out. We'll try. There's just too many things that are like really dragging my time down. Welcome to the okay. Uh, we have intel that the syndicate is active in the area. That's a good but first this target. Is not going to be easy. Previous actions have put them on high alert, so you need to be tactical. Oh, one guy there. Can I, Can I hit you? Can I hit you? Can I hit you? Can I hit you? Excellent work. Oh, I don't know if there's a good shot. I don't know if there's a good shot. Uh, I don't think there is. You have to come outside? Oh, it's her? Oh my god, no way. I think she comes outside if I double shot, yeah. Yeah. Syndicate member eliminated. Nobody noticed me. Nobody noticed me. 
Do not go orange. If it goes orange, I'm literally dead. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. It's over. Runs dead. 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 No one's never been more dead. Yeah, it's dead. Fuck me. All right. GG. 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 Good pace. Good pace. Good pace. Good pace. Now we're going to watch House MD.